Ho, ho, homies, you're gay. Hey, everybody, welcome to The Hangup. It's a Wednesday night here on the line. Thank you all for tuning in. I get it. We're between Christmas and New Year's, and because of that, we're fully expecting that there won't necessarily be as many people watching. On the other hand, the people watching, probably not just the, a mix of the people who are normally here, but people who had nobody else to engage with after Christmas on Boxing Day and stuff like that. And now you know, you know, we're all having fun. I'm having a great time. Let's do some year-end kind of roundup, quickie discussion things. Uh, Jimmy's here with me today, but I'm going to do my little my little open and rant thing first because uh, I got I got really irritated today. And uh, then we'll take callers. By the way, uh, as always, welcome to the line. It's a call-in network, and this is just one of the many shows on the line. Um, in addition to this program, tomorrow is going to be the Transatlantic Call-In Show. I think it's Katie and Arden tomorrow, but I'm not sure. It may just be Arden and somebody else I haven't heard yet. Um, I also don't – I'll let Jimmy do the announcements. He's here. He knows who's going to be on on Sunday and all that stuff that I don't know. Um, last night was, of course, Dying Out Loud. So Sundays is the Sunday show from 2 p.m. till 5 or 5.30 or whenever the hell we decide to stop. Wednesdays is the hang up with me and whoever happens to be my guest to talk about whatever it is that I'm actually looking forward to talk, chatting about or whatever has been stuck in my craw. Uh, Thursdays is the Transatlantic Call-In Show. Mondays is Skep Talk. Uh, Tuesday is Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock and Dave's guest. Um, if you haven't done your holiday shopping yet, you can go to linemerch.com. Um, where in addition to many other things, we're having a mug competition. So you can buy my mug and only my mug. There are no other mugs for sale. Uh, you can just skip past all the rest of them and go for the Santa hat. Uh, you know, your gay homie ho or your gay ho-ho homie. That's the one you want. You do not want Forrest's mug or Aaron's mug. Um, you do not want, uh, Dr. Ben's mug or Jimmy's mug or Dave's mug or Arden's mug and none, none of that. You just want your gay ho ho homie. Um, if you're our patron, there's a, oh, is it, I don't know if the code for the, the patrons have still have a 25% off code. I think we'd lose on that. That's just for the, uh, the wine glass and the, wine, the wine tumbler, glass. but they're both there still. Yeah. Yeah, which Jimmy can show them off as well as some other stuff when we get in here. But let me tell you what's uh, what's bugging me. I'm I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer from well, the original uh, from you know like Pong and Space Invaders time. And um, as I grew up and branched out, I've had countless console games and was primarily a PC gamer. But I had all the consoles as well. I am ultra competitive. I used to run the number one Counter Strike team on the planet. I then switched to MMOs where in EverQuest, I was the first druid on all EverQuest servers to level 65, 70, and 75. Basically, would camp out in a plane of uh, fire uh, on the night before expansions uh, when they increase the level cap. And then we'd log in and we'd play for 24 hours straight with our group and a couple of people outside the group. And so that's how I did that. Um, I don't get to game as much as I used to because I'm older. And I got a lot going on between the various shows that I do and participate here on the line, as well as all of my extracurricular activities and the fact that Arden and I uh, try to have a life in addition to the fact that we have a hobby slash business um, breeding uh, and selling reptiles. Uh, as a matter of fact, today we made a, a delivery of a bunch of rats because we raise rats and mice as both feeders and pets, and we have some really cool ones. But I still love to play games, and so I stream on Twitch. Um, I have for eight years off, off and on. Um, if you're not familiar, you can find me. I tend to do everything either under my own real name or under Sans Deity. Uh, either way, you can find. And so lately, I've been playing a game called The Talos Principle 2. Uh, I finished it just a couple hours ago before we went live here. And I, for, if you are a gamer and if you are like me, incredibly anti-spoiler, um, you might want to just pause, go get a drink, come back in three or four minutes, because I'm going to be talking a little bit about the game, um, and there will be spoilery things in here. And, and just tune in when you see Jimmy, and then you'll know I'm done giving spoilers on the game. Anyway, the first Talos Principle I played on my PS4. It was probably the only game on my PS4, I think, where I had 100% completion. Solved all the puzzles, did all the extra stuff, everything. It's a great puzzle game. I like really good puzzle games. The greatest puzzle game of all time, by the way, is The Witness by Jonathan Blow. Jonathan's created a couple of my all-time favorite games. 
uh, the witness and braid being uh, two of them. Um, no, I don't play CS2. I, I, we played a little bit, but I'm not, not playing. Um, I might play the finals. We're going to, we're going to wait and see. Um, but I, I'm, I'm old and slow and my eyesight doesn't work as well. I, I cannot play first person shooters at the same skill level that I did when we were the world beaters. Um, so we're not doing that. But Towers Principle 1 is a great puzzle game that also includes like some introductory, an introduction to some deep philosophical concepts. Um, it is outstanding. Yes, it's a little buggy and glitchy and you can, you know, everything's going to, you're going to find bugs and everything to speed run it. But game wise, it was really good. And for some people, it was powerful and eye opening because it was their first introduction to some aspects of philosophy. The Talos Principle 2 just came out a month or so ago, a month, month and a half, two months, excuse me. And it carries on where the first one left off. Um, the first one's one of the best games I played. The second one, not as good, but by and large, it's a good game. Everything I'm about to say, spoilery and complaining, uh, has nothing to do with the fact that there is a good game there. It was an interesting experience for me to play Talos Principle 2 because, first of all, somebody came in my chat and ended up getting so upset that it caused a little rift, and then I ultimately had to, to block them because they wanted to know what I thought of the story. And I said, I don't care. And this was evidently a little too much for them to, to handle, um, that I didn't like this, this incredibly important story, which isn't true. It's not, I didn't say I didn't like it. I said I didn't care. And let me, I, there's an example I've used many times. For those of you who have seen The Matrix, um, if you had never been exposed to the problem of hard solipsism and you know, have this kind of brain in a vat type of thought experiment stuff introduced to you, then when you watch The Matrix, it can be for some people a whoa, holy crap moment. And that's cool. For me, when I first saw The Matrix, I loved the movie, but it was not a whoa moment because I had already spent time studying this problem. And so I was like, oh, cool. They're doing, you know, a take on solipsism, you know, are, are, you know, is, is the reality you experience real and all that. And I was like, it was like, cool. It was great to do it, but it wasn't like groundbreaking. There were people, there were some people for whom the matrix is so groundbreaking that it has become meme worthy about whether you're a blue pill or red pill and, and all of that stuff. Um, and spawned some absolutely misogynistic crap out of that. The Taos principle is similar, but about related and secondary principles within philosophy. My frustration with the first game was that quite often it would ask you to make a decision based on your thoughts on a philosophical problem. And they did a pretty good job of giving you a number of different options uh, and then tailoring your experience to what you described. But this is very difficult to do. This sort of choose your own adventure thing when you do it in the realm of philosophy, when you start to prioritize, I mean, um, you go back to Ultima, it did this in a different sense where you create your character and the decisions you make impact the game. Um, or maybe that was Ultima 4 or 1. I don't know. I don't remember. But anyway, your avatar is there. Talos Principle 1, I had some objections to because there wasn't often enough that the concepts were explained well enough where you could pick one of the answers given the limited pool. You, you weren't able to say, I don't know enough to make me happy, and it narrowed the focus. When it came to Talos Principle 2, having known that I'd been frustrated by elements of the first one, I largely just skipped all the dialogue. I skipped the story. All I was mainly focused on was the puzzles, and there are a lot of them. Um, I, I don't know exactly how many hours I've got into the game, but it's a lot. I, I streamed it. 10, 10 or 11 times on Twitch um, in spans of one to three or four hours. Here's the thing. This is where the spoilers come in. It touches on a lot of interesting ideas, including what's real, what's not, and a grand unified theory. This is where 
a couple of mistakes came in very late in the game. And I say mistakes in the sense of this is not what I wanted. I think they were mistakes. And one of them pissed me off to the point where I wanted to un uninstall the game. Essentially, if you're going to pretend that you have a computer that has uh, come up with the grand unified theory um, and is going to describe it, you better be really good or vague. It would have been better for them to say, to, to have it glitch out then and allow the player um, to kind of take over this journey and not answer the question and explore it more, uh, you know, from a different direction in Talos Principle 3 or whatever else. But then they did something that was just, for me, gross. And that was, I don't mind when stories get sappy and they're like, and love will heal it all. I'm mocking it a little bit. It definitely did that. Love conquers all. It is trait and pedestrian. And yet it is a powerful message that resonates in many different media and games. And I'm okay with it. But then they were describing what Athena, the, the computer behind this, uh, had discovered and what her hopes and her fears were. And the the narrator at this point basically says her hopes were real and her fears were real and humans are the unpredictable element and you just have to have faith and i threw up in my mouth a little bit wanted to uninstall the game and leave uh, i went ahead and finished i did the last bit of puzzles um your gamer homie nice i like that spud uh i i i I didn't quit. I went ahead and finished the game. Um, overall, if you can put up with a little, you know, pablum esque uh, homage to faith, um, it's probably not going to bother you. But it was really irritating me because you didn't have to go anywhere near that. You didn't have to talk about what was discovered. You could have left that open ended. You, there were there was a better way to do all of that, given what was included in the game and there was no need to bring in anything about faith and also there was no need to make human beings uh truly unpredictable there's a caller that we're going to get to shortly so hang on because it'll be good questions who's, who's going to prompt some discussions about free will and stuff but if you are going to have um you're going to claim that now you have a formula where you can predict everything from the origin of the universe to the end of the universe. And yet somehow we can't predict what humans do. Bullshit. I mean, I get it. It's, it's your, your fantasy narrative, but that really feels like you are playing up to the majority of people who want us to be special, who need us to be special. When the facts of the universe as it is right now suggest that we're not special. The universe doesn't care about us and that to whatever extent um, we make decisions, um, our will is as potentially predictable as anything else. It's just too complicated for us to be able to see it and read it. But if you know, you're gonna have a computer program that can actually uh, go through the, uh, through the entirety of you know, this theory of everything and, and give answers, the fact that it went to faith, like I, I wanted to enter virtual reality and throat punch a developer for that. Not in, not in reality, reality, because I don't like violence, but in, in the virtual reality in the game, I wanted to do that. It's just frustrating because something that was really good and really thought provoking ended with the most trite crap you could have put in front of me. Um, it, it, it would have been it would have been better for them to find a god, which in a way I suppose they they kind of hinted at um, something god esque. Um, but to just say you have faith, you have to have faith is really frustrating. So that's the end of Talos Principle Two and the spoiler stuff. That's my my epic wine for. Uh, the fine the final year of my uh, uh the final rant of this year including my thoughts on uh, gaming 
We're going to do some fun stuff today. We're going to take calls. We're going to we're going to be doing all super chats over five dollars tonight instead of ten bucks because uh, you know it's the holiday spirit. And I just want to I just want to get and have fun and have people call in, ask questions. There were several people I argued with on Twitter. I tried to get um, you know people uh, inspired to perhaps call in because so many people were telling me how clueless I was about Christianity. Uh, you don't understand forgiveness and redemption. And I'm like, I could deliver a sermon right now, put on my Jesus hat and deliver a sermon on redemption that anybody in any Baptist church in the, in the U S uh, would be like, yep, that's what my preacher said. Um, and more go into it from the standpoint of different denominations. But it, it was people who haven't spent time thinking about this. See me objecting to facts that I think they think are facts about Christianity, but facts about a particular doctrine of Christianity. And they're like, oh, this guy doesn't understand. Uh, Matt's clues about Christianity. Matt doesn't understand the Bible. Matt doesn't understand forgiveness. Matt doesn't understand redemption. Matt doesn't understand salvation. Really? Really? You want to do it? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> oh, wait, I need to put a different hat on so that if anybody clips it, it'll be very clear. There you go. Made you look Black Lives Matter. Um, no, I probably shouldn't do that either because somebody could clip this out. But from the biblical standpoint, redemption is conditioned on repentance, which is a turning away from sin. However, you have a sinful nature, according to the Bible, and so you're always going to continue to sin. The entire purpose is to show you that you are never, ever, ever, ever going to live up to what God would accept. And so God forgives you anyway. God knows your heart. God knows your mind. God gives you, gives you. Whether There's nothing you do to deserve it or earn it. It's not about how sorry you are or anything else. God gives you salvation. It is the gift that's because God knows your heart and God has chosen you by grace through faith. That's it. And so I pointed out that Christianity offers people a way to continue to do bad things without having to make amends. And they're like, what do you mean you don't have to make amends? You have to convince an omnipotent God that you're really sorry. No, you don't. But even if you did, you can be genuinely sorry and continue to do that despite your desire to turn away because you are a fallen creature with a sinful nature. There's no way for you to ever stop being a sinner. That's the foundation of the gospel. That's why Jesus had to come and die as a substitutionary atonement for what you did and what you did and what you did. I know what you did. This is the way this goes. If you kill somebody and God forgives you and you go to heaven, cool, but you did not make amends. You have no way of making amends to the person you killed. There's that famous quote, if Smith owes me $5 and God forgives his debt, I'm still out $5. That's the problem with this notion of redemption from sin that is based on repentance because your salvation is not at risk. You're either saved or you're not, and you're saved or not based on God's desire, God's will, and God's grace, not because of anything you did, which means not because of how sorry you are. And so when people say that Christianity does not appeal to man's desires, bullshit. Man's desires not only um, would include being a special creation, having a creator that loves them, having somebody who knows the answer, having someone who's looking out for them even when they can't, having someone who cares about them when it seems that nobody else does, having someone who will forgive them for their wrongs so they do not have to make amends to the people who are actually uh, wronged by this. Uh, men, and actually men gender-wise, are the apex of power and control within reality. You end up with submissive women, wives and concubine, concubines, parasitic clergy, uh, and you get forgiveness for anything you do without making amends to those people. All of those things are desires that we have, not the least of which is this desire to be special, to know that someone loves you and knows and understands all the things that you don't know and understand. It is a magical MacGuffin that drives it. And they're like, yes, but it makes you do things you don't want to do. Yes, 
because if it was just there without any sort of investment on your part, it would be obviously false and obviously fake to anyone and everyone. So you got to tithe a little and you got to say you're sorry and you got to go to church. You don't, none of this stuff is, is conditioned to your salvation. This is about how you act. This is the, your investment into the religion is the cost. Oh, I've been a bad person. I need to feel bad. It makes you feel guilty for a little while and does nothing to repair you as a person, which is why I ended up banning over a dozen different people who were calling people all kinds of names and using the R slur. And, you know, it just, it, it was a parade of ridiculous bigotry. Uh, so wild. And... But, you know, you can call in and say that I don't know anything at all about repentance or redemption or forgiveness, um, and we'll be here to take the call. I, I'd be interested. And if you don't want to do it in a call-in format, you can always apply to be on InBoss. If you go to um, uh, callon.com, you can find a link there to Q&A the line. Sorry, QNA line, QNA line com. Links down below in, in the chat slash inboss. You can go there to apply to be on inboss. The format is one hour. We can run a little bit over. It's very simple. Five minute welcome. Then you, as the challenger, get 10 minutes to present your, your case for your position, your affirmative position. Not a question. And then we'll start super chats and call screening. You got 10 minutes to do that. Then there'll be five minutes of the end boss, whoever it is, maybe me, maybe somebody else. You, you get to pick in some cases. Um, five minutes of the end boss attempting to steel man your position so that everybody understands what it is. And then there's 20 minutes of questions that are selected by the end boss from super chats and calls. And then 10 minutes of questions directly from the challenger this is, or from the end boss is where the challenger faces the end boss for 10 minutes. And then as a challenger, you get five minutes to close. And that's the last word. The end boss doesn't come back in at the end of it to, to redo things as, as has happened. And there was one of my debates where after it was all over, the, um, the organizer got up and gave an extra little sermon kind of trying to undercut all the damage that I had done during the debate. It was really funny. Um, but you're going to get the last word there. There'll be a little bit of wrap up afterwards, administrative work. And so as for the people who are like, when is Inboss starting? It's going to start just as soon as we've already contacted some of the people who applied. Uh, as soon as we can arrange a time um, when they're available, we're going to start. Uh, the problem is, is that right now <laughs> we're in the middle of the holiday season and a lot of people are busy with family, especially people who might be calling in to defend uh, religious things in particular. So if you have a position you'd like to defend and run the gamut, uh, and challenge the inboss, you can go to qnaline.com slash inboss to apply for that. Jimmy's here with me. Jimmy, how was your year? How was your 2023? Hot garbage. How was yours? Better than hot garbage. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, it, it really depends on what we're measuring on, but I've, I've spent most of 2023 handling some health stuff. And so that's been not super fun, but uh, yeah. Other than that, you know, the line has had a great year. That's been good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is Once the, you, this well, is the current you score. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Forrest, Forrest and Aaron are, are selling just oodles and gobs of mugs and good for them. Uh, yeah. But mine should be, mine should have a lot more. <laughs> tonight's my night. Tonight's my show. Yeah. Like I'm at 55. If we're not, if we're not near, like if we don't beat Aaron by the end of the night, I'm going to, I'm going to take my, my mug out of competition <laughs> and only, only the people who bought it before tonight will ever get it. Make it a super It'll exclusive continue forever. It's super exclusive. You got to get it tonight. Yeah. Uh, tell them about the hoodie you're wearing. Cause... Man, th think about how Arden, uh, Arden and I feel right now. Cause we're the two who we're the behind the scenes magic people. Arden's about to double up. Arden's going full time as of the first. I'm going to be doing twice as much. Yeah, this hoodie's not yet available, but it will be soon. Uh, I wanted to get a sample of it because it's an all over print, and I was worried that that would mean it's going to suck, and it doesn't suck so far. But I want to wash it a few times, see if that if it immediately loses its golden glow. Uh, but yeah, this will be available soon, and then we'll run some stuff with this old logo on it for a few months. And then we're actually working on rebrand. Well, I, I want to call it rebranding, but 
updating our logo and stuff. So this sort of line classic logo, once it's out there, will only be available for a couple months. There's also this logo on the back of all of the mugs. And then I also got my wine tumbler today. You're on the wine with Jimmy and Matt. There's now a Shannon and a Paul version. But today we're really talking about the mugs. Sweet. By the way, if you buy a mug, you can leave a message. And any messages that come in during this show, we will read those on air as well. So if you're going to spend money on a super chat anyway, get something instead. Have a physical, uh, have a physical yeah. thing. I, we, we will, you know, as I mentioned, t tonight, and normally on my show, we tend to do um, a $10 threshold for Super Chats to read them all because otherwise we'd be here till midnight, yeah. um, which you know, is fine. I'm happy to do that. We, we cut down to five bucks a day because I'd actually rather, I mean, you, you put whatever you want in Super Chats, be supportive. We love you guys. And Jimmy and I are here and we'll read stuff until our eyeballs fall out if that's what you want. But it would be so nice for people to get something like a mug, like a, like a wine glass, like all those things. Uh, so that while they're sitting around at home with their family members, somebody can be like, wait, does your mug say you're gay? Ho, ho, homie. What's mm -hmm. that about? And then you can explain it. Uh, and, and I know I get it. There are some people who are like, Ooh, but I'm scared to explain a mug like that. I'd much rather have a mug. That's just don't ever have a bad day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or ooh, in a ha 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 yeah, yeah in well, fairness because my mug is for risk takers yeah yeah you and i are the risk takers too on the mug thing because now we're both trying to push a mug that mentions christmas in some way yep on the 27th is it today yeah on the 27th yeah. we're, we're, we're the we're, we're like the only ones that went with the proper holiday spirit I mean, yeah. Dave drew a flower. Dr. Ben's got some go-go juice. Arden's just trying to sell her dimples like she does all the time. <laughs> Forrest is just, oh, let me show you some science. And Arden's like, ooh, let me do science and snakes. You and I, well, we, we got closer to holiday anyway. You know the worst part? Uh, I've been booking next month today. And I told everybody they have till midnight on the 1st. Well, guess who wanted the 1st? For Skep Talk, to host Skep Talk. Guess who was like, I'll take that oh. day. Yeah. Is it Forrest? Mr. Forrest will be, uh, will be hosting Skep Talk who's, next Who's Monday. he on with? Hasn't decided yet or hasn't figured that out yet, but he's hosting. Well, I, I think he should be on with whoever's in second place on the mug list right away. Second or last? Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Go, go <laughs> with last. Yeah. And then we'll keep having technical difficulties selling his mug. I'm... I'm sorry. I realize you logged in and you clicked on Forrest Mug, but for some reason you bought another one of Arden's Mug. That's right. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, but yeah, so that's uh, tomorrow will be, you were asking about who's on. Tomorrow's going to be Stephanie Helms with Arden Hart. Oh, and yes. I remember that now. Sunday's You and Me, though we might do, it may be that you and I either decide not to do it because we're also doing the New Year's event that night. Um. Or that maybe we, if we're feeling up to it, maybe we do a Cuz I Want on Saturday and then the New Year's thing, but it'll all depend. <clears throat> it will all... Yeah, I have uh, videos to finish up uh, Friday and Saturday so that I have free time for Sunday to, to do everything we need to do. Yeah. It's a busy time of year. But I'm, I'm, I'm sitting now. People, some, some people have been here a while know the code that if, I, if Jimmy's standing at the beginning of an episode, it means he doesn't feel very well. That's the, there's something about keeping the blood flowing that keeps the nausea down. Oh, I went too far. Not I've gone yet. too far. I'm going to keep raising and lowering my head and moving further back you know was, and forward. You know what was really funny? It was while you were doing your video game rant. Um, so, so people get an idea because I think, I think you've seen it, though I don't know if you've seen it in the current iteration. Right now, the computer that runs the line is mounted to the wall and there's a monitor next to it and it reflects whatever's going on on that computer. Then there's a monitor here that was sort of trying to, so that's there from me. Then here from me is the monitor that shows whatever YouTube is seeing. And then down yeah. here is a monitor that uh, this is where I control super chats. This is where I do all the production stuff and it's remoted into the computer on the wall. So, uh, I had that screen open while you were doing your rant, you were doing your hands a lot. 
and I'll send you the video I took of it because it, there's something very pleasant about the cascade of motion and this sort of arching, you're here, you're there, you're there. And it just, it was uh, uh, very pleasant to my pattern seeking brain. I liked it. Yes. I had fun. Sweet. Anyway, it wasn't that We funny. got callers if you're ready to take them. Yeah, go for it. Sweet. I'm, I'm going to start with um, this one. With Jim in California, pronouns are he, him, a theist who has a question about excluded middle versus fuzzy logic. So, Jim, welcome. You're on the Hangup with Matt and Jimmy. Thank you. Glad to be here. How are you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Sorry. I hear you just fine. We had trouble with the screener. So, uh, I wanted to start by explaining where I ran into this issue. I was talking to someone who has a different religion and they asked me, do you exist or do you not exist? And I can only have one answer. And I said, I don't know. Um, because, um, I, I was thinking about the extent to which we exist. Uh, for example, do we exist from one, um, small instance of time to another we might be flickering in and out of existence that kind of thing and he said well you better decide that you exist uh otherwise i'm not going to listen to you because if you don't exist you don't have a right to talk um i don't really know what kind of fallacy that is but he seemed to really believe in that um so uh we argued about it for a while and it really reminded me how on your show you talk about excluded middle a lot because um, that was kind of where he was coming from. I can only make one decision. I don't know. It's not an acceptable answer. Um, and I just wondered how you would interact with this. Well, so first of all, whether or not you're convinced you exist is a completely separate question from whether or not you exist. And if you want to say only those people who exist have rights, um, you're talking about something different than whether or not you're convinced you exist, because it's, I'm not aware of it being the case that only those people who are convinced they exist have rights. Um, moreover, I think it's really, um, you have rights if whoever's granting rights is convinced you exist. So if you want to figure out if I have a right to talk, uh, it doesn't matter whether I think I exist. What matters is who's granting the rights do they think I exist? So they're already talking to the same, to, to, the, to the wrong person. The other thing is that there's a difference between um, logical arguments surrounding a question and logical arguments surrounding a proposition. And I prefer and deal with for the reason, because it's simplistic, propositional logic. So instead of saying, do you exist as a question and saying you can only answer yes or no, which is nonsense. You can answer any way you want saying, I don't know means you're not, you're not convinced of either of the two options presented. And you may not even be convinced that those are the only two options. Um, that's why in propositional logic, we don't deal with a question. Instead, it should be a proposition. Jim exists and you are either convinced that Jim exists or you are not convinced, which is completely independent from, you know, there's a difference between I'm not convinced I exist and I'm convinced I don't exist. Those are different. And this is where you were talking about, you know, excluded middle versus from the, from the screener, you were like fuzzy logic. Let's not go into that because excluded middle applies to bivalent logic where, where the truth table is just true and not true. Uh, fuzzy logic adds additional elements. And so I think identity, non-contradiction, excluded middle would fall apart in that structure um, because they're about a bivalent logic. So that's how I would respond to the person who's like, do you think you exist? Yes or no? Well, first of all, I'd say, yes, I think I exist. Um, I think that Descartes, for the most part, uh, solved this in any way that makes sense, which is I think, therefore I am. There must be something that is me, even if everything else is an illusion, because there must be a target that's being deceived. And the only thing about that that's problematic was pointed out by, I believe, Hobbes, that it is contingent on the reliability of logic. So my conclusion that I exist is contingent on reason being reasonable. And that's how I would answer the person 
that went after you. It's sort of strange, though, because you don't find a lot of people, even when they're dealing with, like, the problem with solipsism isn't that, who the fuck is calling me while I'm doing a show? Fuck off. <laughs> uh, sorry, mom. Just kidding. It's definitely not my mom. Uh, <laughs> she never calls. Uh, the, the, when, when the she solipsism stuff comes up, it's never really about, usually, do you believe you exist? Uh, it's more about the fact that you can't prove any external mind exists to yourself than your own. Uh, and you can't prove to somebody else that you exist to them, but it's very weird that it took that direction. And I guess it's, I guess I don't even understand what you mean when you say that you aren't sure that you exist, because that would be the only thing that when you're talking it, about solipsism, the, that you, it runs parallel to what you're saying, because, uh, we were having a religious discussion and my thought was, like, in terms of um, the God that he was proposing, uh, I don't know whether or not I exist to God. So I don't know if he's outside of the universe and has no way to but that's a interact totally, or even be aware with us. But that's a totally different thing, because then for you to say you do exist would be to accept his God if it's on the terms of his God. And then for him to say you don't have rights on the base of that is just three theocratic autocracy. That's nonsense. Just fascism. Uh, uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm still a little bit, uh, what's your, what, def, it, what what's your definition of existing? Beyond that, it's just the extent to which we exist. We don't, we don't really know because right, define, a define to, exist for me. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to fight. I'm just confused on what you're even saying. So what do you mean when you say to exist? Oh, uh, myself personally, I, I mean, that's the thing is I'm, I'm so confused by the question of existence. I don't know if I'm going to have an afterlife. I don't know um, if anything I'm doing has any real meaning or if it's ever going to have an impact. And I'm constantly um, kind of mulling over that in my head and I, I never really come to an answer. Uh, so I, I don't know if there is a good answer, and that's kind of. I think the difference. maybe you just need to go and look up definitions of exist, because I think you're trying to say you need to come up with some deep existential thing. Whereas, like for me, I would go, I'd start with the simplest definition of present. Am I present? I am. Can I it, say it anything of, about the reality for sure that I appear to be present in? No, but that's not what we're talking about. Existing. I well, can well, maybe say, the, the easiest way to think of it is like, um, do, do, do my past actions still exist uh, other than in my memory? Like in the way, do fantasy creatures exist the way I imagine them in my head, you know, other than in, in my brain? I mean, do they actually exist? And I, I don't know. I, I look into that a lot. It's very interesting for me. And um, I, I think sometimes when I have these conversations with people, I can see that they're almost trying to add extra depth to things when it's like, I don't. I, so does your, does your past, uh, uh, do your past actions exist? Not presently, obviously. So no, the consequences of those actions do, but they aren't physically present. Are you physically present? Yes. You exist. Good enough. I, I agree with that. I just, I think what I'm trying to say is that I don't have, I'm not comfortable with creating like a, a strict definition of existence. Um, I'm kind of worried that someone else has a different view of what existence means. And I don't want to sign into that. Then, you know, I, I have my own feelings about existence and I think it's more complicated than a simple yes, no answer. Well, well, I don't. So I'm, I'm curious about your definition of existence, but that's fine. If you have different thoughts about that and everything else, it seems to me then that whoever you're having this argument about, if they say, do you exist? You need to say, what do you mean by existing? I would be like, I would like to answer the question according to what you mean by existing, or you, I will be happy to tell you what I mean by existing and try to answer the question by that. But if you don't come to some agreement on what you two are talking about by the word existence, then you're never going to get anywhere. You're going to be talking past each other the whole time. Even if you don't get all the way to the definition, where if you're like, I don't know about this or this or this, to me, it's like there's simple questions. Jim, for a phone call to happen, does it have to happen between two agents that exist or three in our case? Uh, yeah, I suppose yeah. so. We're using the Are you an definition. agent on a phone call? 
Yeah, I agree with that. Good enough. I'm like, this is <laughs> this is the I and, and maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I'm the weird one. But I'm like, why do people have, uh, as far as things to dread about your existential status, whether or not you actually exist? I feel like is. Jim, if you, let's say you don't exist, somehow you don't exist. Are you having every experience and at least an extremely convincing of illusion of existing? Yeah, so I do am. Do you have I, I any think other choice? My question is the con- the continuity of existence. Which yeah, that's that's a big problem. That's the I don't know. Uh, con- continuity of existence is key to a, a number of different problems like you know I, we had i'm not going to go into it but we had lots of arguments about the transporter problem when it comes to star trek and um my take on it is that every time you step into a star trek transporter you are committing suicide and after you know that what comes out on the other side is a copy of you and if you're okay with that you're okay with that that a copy of you gets to live on but it's not you because there's no continuity there's no internal continuity of experience and there's no um, apparently external continuity with the facts of reality. And so I'm opposed, I mean, well, I, I say I'm opposed, it's a fictional scenario, and but it's important to address, you know, hey, this continuity. So you're, 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 you're picking up a, a good point about um, the importance of continuity. But once again, until you define terms with the person you're talking with, um, I don't know what else to tell you. Oh, no, this is really interesting stuff. And um, I think you kind of got into the fuzzy logic stuff because you said that, um, I think you said something like binary, binary logic and ex- bivalent logic and excluded middle go hand in hand, but not with other kinds of logic. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I, I have to be very careful. Um, before I go making declarations about logic, I, I am in no way any sort of expert on fuzzy logic or multi-valued logic or anything at all like that. Uh, I just, from my understanding of bivalent logic and things like excluded middle, um, that's where the limitations come in. Okay. Okay. Well, that's really interesting. I, I didn't really expect that. Yeah. I mean, um, we were talking about by uh, excluded middle in terms of like the Kalam cosmological argument. You probably don't want to get into that, but the basic building blocks of the universe and stuff. And there are so many theories out there. And I, I just, um, I don't know. It was really refreshing to to hear that from you guys. I want to so, get into it if you believe it, if you accept the Kalam. Um, no, I, I just don't, I don't think there's enough, information to i mean even if we did accept that we wouldn't really know how it happened and that's the problem that i have with the kalam argument is that when it comes down to it building that argument over we exist or we don't something was caused or it wasn't it just seems insufficient to me and maybe there was a creator but i just think it, it must be more more complicated than that if there was. Did you did you tell our call screener though that you're a theist? Yeah, um I'm kind of into like at, like new age esoteric type stuff. Um you know like spiritual transformation and things like that. Um I was kind of worried we'd get into it though cuz I don't want to get ripped apart. I know you guys can probably uh argue me down in a million different ways. Just answer honestly, and there's no ripping yeah. apart. We only fight with the people who are dicks. If you don't want to defend your position, you don't have to. But I would I, say I just, that... I don't think I'm prepared to. Yeah, I think probably that's the case. Um, Very honest. But certain certain thing like yeah. that you'd want to dig in on is, like when somebody tells me they're into sort of esoteric spiritual things, I need to know what the hell you mean by spiritual. I don't, I don't know what that means for you. Um, and when we get into sort of like esoteric God concepts, at the end of the day, it's always about what evidence do you have that the thing you're convinced of is real? Is it sufficient to warrant belief? If not, then you're irrational. And if so, then I'll believe it. 
So I'll, I'll go down that road. Um, my idea of spirituality is um, the idea that the things that I do, my behaviors, can alter reality, essentially. That's not why, why, why would you call that spirituality? Um, I, I, I'm an, as far as I can tell, well, I'm no. an extant. Hang on, hang on, hang on. As far as I can tell, I'm a person. Um, mm -hmm. This is a bottle of Tums, which I'm going to pull one out and enjoy as we can continue the rest of this conversation. I think there's incredibly strong evidence that I can grab this Tums and chew it up. And that fundamentally changes something in reality. I find this to be virtually undeniable that I've changed something in reality. Why on earth would we say that that's spiritual? Um, because I, I think our definition of reality is different in that you're changing the environment. When I say reality, I mean like all reality. What does that so, mean? <clears throat> like um, some uh, kind of uh, transcendent experience that I would experience would cause the entire, the entirety of the world to change all at once. And my experience from that point forward would always be different. So you can see why I have arguments about continuity with people. <laughs> but because the example I, I just like gave, to believe the example I just gave change the example I just gave changes reality and changes my experience forever. I don't know what you mean by changing all of reality and saying that my example isn't like it. What what is it that's changing? Well, well, when you when you take a Tums, you're you're having kind of an expected um, result, and it's a small result. I'm talking about like a large scale, um, like a planet shaping event. All right, Jim. Let me make it easy. We're talking because you're talking about oh, actions. Okay. You're talking about actions affecting the universe. If Matt and our my position, which is we don't know, but mostly materialistic, naturalistic, is correct, we could take some set of actions, and that will have like eating the Tums. That's the level of action we can take. If yours is correct, give me an example of an action that you can take that our worldview would not account for that would have some larger universal, what the universal outcome was, what your directly just an example of an action that is, it is required for your esoteric spirituality to be true to happen. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure if I can check all those. Check marks because that's a lot to take in. Um, should have taken notes. Um, I'm just thinking, like, it, just so that you understand what I'm talking about. If I were to just sit and meditate and come to some kind of conclusion, um, for example, at the beginning of the show, Matt went on this really interesting rant about, um, I think, kind of like a cult of purity or um, how we're like fallen angels and we need to, like, repent but maybe there's some other kind of uh important pledge that's important to our spiritual evolution such as um building trust with the spirit and by building that trust it might take us like through a portal to a new world where everyone is different okay have you gone through a portal to a new world i have not okay how do you know that's possible um, I don't, I just kind of, okay. Um, can you now, can you now give an example? Can you now give an example instead of just saying it's bigger of what you mean by altering reality? Give me an example of how you've altered reality. Oh, I, I haven't. This is, I mean, my beliefs are more of an aspiration than something that I have evidence for. So okay. Okay, I wish I so, could. so basically you're mm -hmm. saying that without any way to justify it, you're convinced that it's possible or at least a worthy pursuit of yours to engage in something that you're going to call spiritual in order to change reality in some grand way that you can't describe, you can't know is possible, and you can't demonstrate is possible. I think I might 
I think I might know what branch of. Yeah, I think you you pretty much. Um, how is this head. not? How is this not a monumental waste of everybody's fucking time? If I were to say, I have this notion that if I just sit here in this chair and think hard enough, it might be the case that I can fundamentally change how gravity works everywhere in the universe. That's pretty big. Why don't I sit here and just think about it? And then I'll call into shows and say, I can't prove it. I can't give an example of it. I can't justify it. I can't make any sort of argument as to why anyone should think it's possible when all of the available evidence suggests that it's not possible. Otherwise, we would be having reality shifts all the time. What on earth are you, how is this not one of the biggest right. wastes of time instead of pursuing the truth? Why are you pursuing your pipe dreams instead of the truth? I don't think it's like necessarily a waste of time, like not in so much as like listening to music or reading a nice book. I mean, I don't spend my entire life dedicated to it. It's just something that how, I help how much form. time have you spent? How much time have you spent dedicated to this spiritual evolution pursuit of yours? Um, it's definitely something that it, it's preoccupying. I would say I, I probably think about it more than I should. Okay. But, uh, How much progress have you made on spiritual evolution in that, in that time that you've spent? I already know the answer, but probably not. It's zero. Not a whole lot. It has to be zero. I mean, I wouldn't really know. I, I mean, uh, the way you have that no way of, you have no way of, of, of no reason to think you've made any progress at all. If you have no reason to think you've made any progress, then how is it not the case that every second you've spent on that was wasted? You don't even have a way well, to demonstrate. You don't even have a way to demonstrate that if you spend every second of your life on this for the rest of your life, you have no way to demonstrate that you will ever make any sort of progress at all. I, I think like the guides that I follow basically show that there's a utility in the pursuit itself. It's just, something that you can enjoy and it helps you to uh, make other types of progress in your life. When you say guide, is there a name for the belief system that you have? No, I wish there was. Cause it reminds um, me of one that I've interacted with people before. And it's one that when I get high, it's real fun to think about, but the idea is it's not magical. The idea is that uh, it's basically simulation theory, but it's a it's an individual simulation theory where it's actually that I the if it was true I the person with having experience is essentially in a video game, uh, and this video game has certain parameters and stuff, and it's something that uh, that our very futuristic society does because it got so bored with living uh, forever, and that uh, there is ways in which through meditation and other things that people mistake for spirituality, you can change the code of the game. And you could even change it so much that one day you could uh, meditate yourself into now the code of the game is one where uh, the, for the possibility of you being able to fly at will like Superman actually seems reasonable and that we get little portals into what these kinds of worlds might look like through fiction and through books and stuff. It sounds so similar to that to me. And I'm wondering if you heard somebody believed that, would you feel you had any more justification in believing what you believe versus them being justified in believing that this is a video game of which they are the main character? Um, no, that's pretty similar. I, the, I mean, the only thing is I don't really expect results. Um, I mean, the thing is, is like the type of results I expect are like to improve, improve the quality of my dreams or to go through the day a little less angry, you know, things like that. And, but fundamentally uh, you know, similar that you're, very you're having some kind of individual playthrough of rea of whatever this reality is. Uh, and your, your, the highest form of your playthrough of that reality would be some ability to manipulate it and you might not be able to but perhaps other people who have played it before have 
Yeah, well, I mean, because the thing is, is if someone were able to do that, there's a good chance that we would never interact with them. It's kind of like the idea that somebody might be a shapeshifter, but they only shapeshift once a year, and every time they do it, they move to a new city. You know? <laughs> Jeez. But it's basically, so never it's it's like you're saying you believe there's an invisible fairy that's always just outside of your ability to detect it because we'd never be able to prove that it isn't the case. That's on Yeah, that and I wonder if it's, it's just a part of, um, just a part of me because, you know, I've tried to ignore it. I've tried to pretend that I don't feel that way, but I always have that, that feeling. Okay. You, you mentioned guides that you follow. What or who are these guides? Are you, are you talking about a person or a, like an instruction set? Um, well, there, there are people, um, unfortunately, we don't all agree on things, which I guess, you know, that kind of goes hand in hand with spirituality. But, um, you know, they do things like remote readings and psychic uh, readings and and who, they'll write like... Who are, who are these? World. Who, who the fu who are these guides, and what can they do? What have they actually demonstrated that they can do? Because there's been a million dollar prize for years for anyone who can demonstrate anything that you are you're calling psychic, and nobody's ever been able to do it. So, who are these guides, and what is it that they can do, and why are you failing? Jim. Hello. Did we lose Jim? I might lost you. There we go. We hear you now. Yeah, it, it's not that they do anything special. I just, um, I respect them and I respect the way they live their lives and okay. the way they interact Jim. with Jim. I don't uh, respect them. I don't respect the way they live their lives. I don't respect your efforts at all. Why should we? What What is it that is respectable about people who demonstrate zero evidence for whatever it is they're thinking, zero efficacy or demonstration of effective results from what they're doing? What is respectable about that? To me, if somebody said, okay. hey, I think there's a fairy just constantly out of my reach. And so I'm going to spend two minutes out of every day trying to reach the fairy that I think is constantly out of my reach. And I'm going to respect the other people who've been trying to do this as well, because I think the pursuit is worthwhile, even though nobody's ever demonstrated any results. Nobody's demonstrated that there's even a possibility of any results. Everybody, I understand from the standpoint of people on the outside that this is a monumental waste of time. Why on earth should anybody respect any of that? Well, I think there's a contrast between people who are pursuing something um, tangible, something physical, like a like a house, and the things that they'll do to ach to achieve that, versus somebody who's enjoying doing very little, and they. Jim, just you're doing nothing. You're doing nothing, and in the process of trying to answer my question, you are answering nothing and saying nothing, nothing of any substance or use. You think there's a difference between people who pursue material things and people who waste their fucking lives on things that have no demonstration of efficacy. Yes, I think there's a difference between those two as well. One of them cares about reality and cares about evidence and wants to do things that are supported by good evidence. And the other one is wasting their fucking time and wants to convince themselves that they're doing something when they're not. Prove me wrong. Okay. Well, but here's the thing, Matt, to achieve here's something the, physical, you often have to do something bad and the means don't justify the ends. And no, no, of no, 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 no. I'm muting you. I'm muting you. No, sir. You are not going to take my objection to the fact that you respect time wasters with no evidence and say, oh, but to achieve something material, you often have to do something bad. It's also possible to achieve something material by doing good things. You don't get to only focus on the people who might have done something negative for that and say, well, at least my time wasting is better than the people who killed to get ahead. Yes, but your time wasting is far inferior to the people who've donated to help 
help the poor and the homeless. You want me to just sit here and say you could be doing something better with your time? It's not just a matter of doing something better with your time. It's about triage and figuring out how time is actually valuably spent. And I'm not going to respect time wasters. And so I'm going to take you off mute. And we're going we're gonna to wrap up this call fairly quickly, but not immediately. All I want, is there anybody you can point to who has demonstrated the, the effectiveness of the pursuit that you are respecting? Is there somebody that's demonstrated results? No, I, again, I wouldn't say there is in the sense that you're looking for, no, sir. Okay then how is it not a waste of time if it, okay. because to me definitionally if i spend my time doing something for which there is no reason to think there's a likely positive outcome from nobody's ever demonstrated a positive outcome from it that pursuit is functionally identical to every other pursuit that you would think is a waste of time how is that one not a waste of time? Because when when you when you engage in this act of not doing something, when you're wasting time essentially, usually you step into that from a place where you're frustrated or angry or anxious and the alternative usually is to do something that's going to be harmful. No, now, I, I agree with you that so it would be better to do it. You're so full of shit. Isn't it you're so full of shit, and you refuse to answer these questions honestly. Uh, you are wasting my time, Jim, and I'm not having any more of it. There's an entire branch of medicine dedicated to the opposite of what you just said, though. I have anxiety. To tell you the truth, I've got a darkness in me and I have an anger in me. I don't make it other people's problems, but I've gone to therapy to learn positive ways. Oftentimes, I, I get very uh, uh, panicky. I, I'll have panic attacks over feeling like things are out of my control. And so I do positive. It's literally when I clean my wood shop. It's just called a positive act of control. The, but Jim, you're just asserting these things because you think you have examples. And, and this is why I was comparing it to the video game guy earlier, because the problem with the video game guy was he thought everything was a sign that this was true because he had so, so polluted his brain with just committing himself to confirmation bias. And I think something like this might have happened with you, but that's not actually the question I have. The question I have is that you specifically said that you were a theist. Uh, and maybe it's in the feeling that you felt between atheist and theist that it, it m felt more correct. I am curious who the God is in this esoteric spirituality of yours. Well, I, I think earlier I mentioned um, spiritual contracts. So in order to sign a spiritual contract, there should be a spirit to sign it with. Okay, so who is that? No, I'm blind. I, I'm not in that world. So you're just saying you I'm believe there is a God, many gods, just this this council of... But fundamentally, you do believe there's another party and that party is is issuing you cheat codes, essentially, or you might be able to get the cheat codes. I just believe that there is a strong enough possibility that it warrants me going through these exercises, and even if they don't achieve anything... There's a possibility that these how, exercises, these mental exercises will be useful in some other that, way. How do you know there's a possibility of it being true? How do you know it's possible that what you believe is true? I, you know, all, all I know is that when I think about these things, it has Jim. an effect on my energy or Jim, Jim, my Jim, dreams. Jim, Jim, that's not what I asked. You've, sure. You use the phrase... But, you believe it's possible. And then and a minute ago, you said that it's a big enough possibility, which means you have I, established have that it is possible. How did you establish that your belief system is even a candidate explanation, that it is even, even could be possible? Well, I don't really think there's a candidate explanation for anything in that sense. I mean, Jim, we don't, Jim, Jim, the spiritual pursuit, the spiritual pursuit that you're you're involved in by thinking, how do you know 
that it wouldn't be more effective if you rubbed feces over your entire body and masturbated for four hours a day. How do you know that wouldn't be more effective at reaching your spiritual contract? I don't know. I'm just not willing to do that. <laughs> oh, so you don't give a shit about the truth. You just want to give yourself an excuse for wasting time. Well, okay. Does this make sense? So it, it, you were talking about a purity cult. Does it make more sense? I didn't talk that, anything at all about a purity cult. Before, like at the beginning of the show, you were at talking the about, of the show, I talked uh, about video games. And then I talked about Christianity and this, and the notion yeah. of repentance and what repentance is in Christianity. Yeah. So instead of using the notion of repentance, what about using the notion of silence? For example, it just, it's what about using the notion of feces and masturbation? What about so using useful. that? What about using the notion what? of feces covering you and masturbation? But wait, but honestly, this is even worse, Jim, because I've Damn. dated people no. like you before where it's like, hey, but by the way, that spiritual thing, I believe you think it's more reasonable than the other stuff, right? That's literally what you're doing right now. No, I, I don't. I don't think it's more reasonable. I don't think it's more possible. You haven't established it as possible. If you're just talking about, do I want people to have some system where when they think they might want to do something bad to get ahead, some sort of thing stops them from doing that? Yes, of course I want that. Luckily, most people are hardwired with it in their brain. They have mechanisms for empathy, and then we as a society uh, uh, have issued what the rules currently are, and we're trying to improve on that all the time. There are those people who don't, and hopefully they see that the disadvantage of going to prison forever. Uh, but of course, people all the time act on uh, uh, poorly and shittily, and I would prefer people to have systems. But to go like, I'd rather it be a good, you know, person, I'd rather it be an astrologer, a person who believes in astrology than a Christian. I'd rather it be that versus that. No, I'd rather everybody only exist in reality. And since we have lots of examples of secular humanists and other secular moralities that need no bullshit, and I don't have to get high to think that they could be true, I don't see a need for the, well, at least it's not Christianity. At least it's not, it's not as bad as that one. Well, do you ever just get the sense that things are too um, amazing to... Uh... No! What? In this world? Are you kidding me? Every time I get a monicum of happiness, I assume something's going to take it away. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Jim. <laughs> I don't mean, Jim, I just Jim, mean too extreme, Jim, not necessarily happy. Jim, Jim, so you want to make some kind of spiritual contract. You have no way to demonstrate that this is even possible, but let's assume it's possible. And so instead of using the previous example that I used before, or your example, how do you know that the path to a correct spiritual contract isn't to stick your fingers in a 220 volt electric current so that you fall and hit the ground and have a near-death experience only to be revived with an epiphany. How do you know that's not the path? How do you know it's not the path to take off your shoes and socks and walk around on the grass uh, and with, with scorpions around until you can get one of them to sting you so that you can have an epiphany from that? How do you know that it isn't uh, the result that this path to spiritual contract isn't about wearing a baseball cap at a particular angle and cocking your glasses just so, so that it skews your perception of reality just a little bit. How do you know any of those are more or less effective than what you're doing? Okay, so now this is more familiar territory. So basically, um, the idea is that there should be a future for the belief system. There should be a, it, it, it should, grow into a community do you think that that is in in any fucking way an answer to the question that i just asked you i asked you wow. of, of the many different competing methods for achieving a goal that you can't prove is real how do you tell which one is better and you said there's an idea that there should be a future for the belief system how is that an answer to my question I thought I had a stroke and 20 minutes went by and you two were having a different convo. 
the, well, the idea is, is basically when you think of the impact you're going to have on the world, how long is your legacy going to last? The longer a positive legacy for you will last, the more Fuck likely you, you are. No, what? No, 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 no. What the fuck does legacy have to do with the question that I just fucking asked you? My question, how do you tell the difference between various paths to your spiritual contract? How do you tell which path is more likely to produce a good effect? I, I would use science for that, I, I guess. Oh, for fuck's sake. Go Jim, away, Jim. Here's my last question for you. Are you afraid okay. of not existing? Yeah. Yeah, I know. All right, see you, buddy. Man. Thanks, guys. Bye. Later. That's all it is. I, I, literally, like, that's, that's the final piece that came together with your last bit of conversation. He's just... And I, in a way, I get it, and I feel for him. And he did say he's probably not ready to defend it, and that has turned out to be true. He's afraid yeah. to die, and he's really cannot, cannot let himself. And I, uh, there may even be people. <laughs> Forrest, I am doing the show with Matt right now. You're on speaker, and the mic is live. Why are you calling? Hey, Everyone can hear you. The show that I'm doing in, in a week or so. Oh, okay. Well, just text me, because Matt and I are doing a show together. Oh. Listening to the line, go buy my mug. <laughs> I knew you. Fuck <laughs> off. You don't get to sell your fucking mug on Mike my show. Says, Fuck off. You can't sell your mug on his show. Love you, buddy. <laughs> See you later. Bye. It, it's so here's the thing you know, okay, Jim's afraid of not existing. Um, none of us, well, all right, there's probably exceptions, but generally speaking, I understand people who are like, hey, uh, I'd rather not exist. If you want <coughs> to, excuse me, if, if you have as a goal, preserving your legacy let me give you some tips jim on preserving your legacy now i don't know whether or not my legacy would be preserved i don't spend a lot of time thinking about it don't really care that much but if i was going to preserve my legacy i would not be calling into shows run by skeptics to present the position of i'm trying to work on a spiritual contract that i have no reason to think is possible that the people I've been listening to who I respect have ne demonstrated no effectiveness at pursuing that as a likely goal, that everybody that I talk to, um, apart from these other people who think that there might be something, feels is a waste of time. Yeah. Your legacy right now, Jim, is that you do not understand how to set a goal and determine which path is more likely to get to that goal. Because you also don't understand how to set a goal that is demonstrably possible. You might as well be saying, I would like for my goal to be to flap my wings and fly to the moon. I don't know if it's possible, but maybe if I sit here and flap long enough, I will find the correct frequency of arm flaps and the correct angle of arm flaps that it will launch me off the ground. And if you're if you're laughing right now, Doug Henning is dead because instead of seeking actual medical treatment, he got into transcendental meditation. And a magician who was friends with James Randi, one of the, one of the most prominent skeptics of the world, sent a letter to James saying he had discovered the secret of levitation. The transcendental meditation crowd had managed to convince a professional magician that he could fucking levitate when he absolutely couldn't. But if you pursue something like that, you will continue to fool yourself. And in the end, you will have wasted your time. Every second that you spent now, maybe it's possible for you to fly. Maybe it's possible for you to levitate. But instead of directing your efforts to trying the thing you suspect might work when you have no reason to think it would, set your goal at finding the best method to likely achieve it. Mm -hmm. But you don't care about that. If you, you, you don't care, I, I tried to give you, a, here's a whole bunch of different methods. Why are you picking this one over another one? 
it's because somebody you respect picked that one too and they've been wasting their time so you're going to waste your time right alongside them at least at least you won't be doing something as silly as you picking something on your own you'll just be copying somebody else and then you guys will succeed or fail together that camaraderie of giving you some cover when you spend the rest of your life trying to do something that may not be possible, at least you won't be alone because there will be a bunch of people who wasted their time just like you did. That must be really comforting, except now you're stuck in this position having talked to us where it won't be comforting because as you get to the end of your life and you realize, holy crap, Matt and Jimmy asked me which method would most likely lead to the results. And instead of working out how to figure out which method would likely to lead to results, I just kept doing what other dipshits were doing that wasn't producing any results at all. Yeah. You know what kind of makes me hopeful, though, about that call was early on in the call, we had a conversation about something else. And then before asking him about his theistic belief or after asking, he said, one, that he probably wasn't prepared to defend it. And two, he also expressed that he was worried it would basically get destroyed. Uh, and then he had this moment as we were kind of directing that, well, all right, we'll probably move on. And he kind of went, you know what? All right, let's do it. And I almost wonder, to me, that expressed, I think this call might have been more beneficial to him than the average call usually is to the theists who call, because I think we might have done that. I think we might have destroyed it for him. I'm not saying it's all going to go away tonight, but I think that he is of, of higher likelihood to take this call and think a whole lot about it and go back and watch it. And yeah, I, I think that... Uh, I think that but was actually he, a pretty productive theist call, potentially. But here's the pessimist in me. Yeah. I suspect Jim will call back with something similarly unwarranted and ridiculous that he's found to replace his current unwarranted and ridiculous methods. Yeah. And the fourth or fifth time he'll do it, he might start to recognize. Now, here's the thing. We've had those people, the people who three or four times in are like, I'm realizing I'm just re okay. Yeah, I get it. I get what I'm doing. And we've even had people who reach out to us later and say, Hey, yeah, I, I deconstructed because of those calls and stuff. And then we have people like Andrew who, what are we up to? Like 30, 40 calls with him where it's a lot of, a lot of concessions. He tried to call by the way, during the new year's show to tell us that, uh, it was while I think I was on with Forrest and Ben, um, after he hung up on us on Sunday, when we asked him a direct question that was going to destroy his argument for him to answer directly, uh, he called in and the notes from the screener was, we, the hosts need to forgive God. Um, at, which is already a weird thing from a Catholic, but whatever that we need to forgive God. So anyway, I, I turned on the line and I said, Hey, Andrew, you remember how you hung up yesterday when we were asking you a direct question? And he started to respond and I hung up. Cause I don't fuck around nice. with that shit. Yeah. Yeah. You hang up on me. Why the fuck am I going to, yeah. Okay. Let's just to switch topic. You can call back when you're ready to answer the question we asked you, not make some stupid, you have to forgive God as though the implication there is that we secretly believe God exists, which I'm so fucking tired of, especially from idiots like Andrew. Um, do you want me to read some of the mug messages that have come in while we've been, uh, while we were in that call? I would love for you to read mug messages that have come in. That sounds like a delightful idea to me. Um, let me, oh, wow. Quite a few came in. <laughs> Y'all are assholes. <laughs> okay. Andrew, thank you for buying an RN mug. Says, sorry, Jimmy, Matt. Sorry, Jimmy and Matt. Can't not buy the snake mug. What's y'all's opinion on Stargate SG-1? Your gods are false here. Some C4. Happy Christmas. I've never watched Stargate. I love Stargate SG-1. Cool. Do you like Battlestar Galactica? Which one? I don't know. I just know the whole thing's written by was written by a Mormon and that there's a lot of Mormonism baked into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I watched the, the original one when I was a kid, and I liked it, but I was a kid. And the new one I liked um, right up until about the ending. Uh, and then it was kind of crap. I can ignore the, the, the Mormonism baked in there. It's yeah. the same as, although there are others where Mormonism is baked in and I can't ignore it as well or don't like it as well. So there was, um, oh, Twilight. there's a sci-fi. Well, I didn't watch any Twilight at all. I've never seen any of the films. Um, there was a sci-fi movie 
uh, Ender's Game. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I think just Mormonism in <laughs> in sci-fi, uh, like like Battlestar Galactica was. Uh, I didn't like it. Yeah, Napoleon Dynamite's got a little bit of secret Mormonism in it too. Little little uh, little hints of it in there. Uh, cool. Jake bought a Matt mug says Matt's an asshole, but he helped me immensely in breaking away from dogmatic nonsense. So he's one of my favorite assholes. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I feel like one out of three compliments toward, toward myself is that I'm some sort of positive adjective followed by asshole. Uh, Kyle says great mug Forrest should do more mugs. Wait till you find out who designed Forrest's mug. Cause I think what you mean is I should do more mugs. Uh, Cassandra bought a Jimmy and Matt mug. That's what I like to see. Nice. Had to support my two favorite hosts on the line. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy and Matt, or don't. I don't care. It's up to you. Uh, Alexis got a Matt mug. Thanks to everyone on the line for helping us learn about Maybe. thinking critically and logic. I've learned more on here than in public school. That means your public school really suck. Cause <laughs> I don't, I, I learned stuff in public school, but that's a really bad. Yeah. Well, to be uh, fair, most of the stuff I talk about, I didn't learn in public school. I had to learn it elsewhere. And so supplemental education to public school seems to be working. Marvin got a mug of mine and Aaron's. Thanks to the line and everyone at the line for what you do. Shane got a Jimmy, a Matt, and a Forrest. I, I feel like that was a pity one where you're like, I want the Forrest mug, but I don't want them to be mad at me. So I'll get all three. Fair enough. Shane says, I have plenty of coffee mugs. These are for booze. I'll buy the rest soon. Jimmy, go Jimmy yourself twice, then put it in a mug and take a big sip. Don't forget, everybody, these will only be available through midnight on January 1st. Uh, Ryan says, I love you all the best. The best channel, best shows, best hosts, and guest hosts. And bought a Dave, Ben, Arn, and Forrest one. If you had bought a Matt one, I was going to refund you the Matt one. <laughs> but because you had bought four. I'm sorry. It's too late. Uh, Bailey got an Aaron and Forrest one only because Forrest interrupted the entire show to whore out his mug. Love you guys. <laughs> there you go. Damn it. For, Forrest is awesome. We love Forrest. We do. His all, mug sucks, but all, Forrest is awesome. All three of us are competitive people. I will tell you, my heart's not in this one that much, though my feelings are a little hurt at how few mugs have sold. I thought it would be more than that, especially when go Jimmy yourself is the meme y'all came up with, not me. <laughs> that's, that's not a, th it's your meme. And by the way, we priced these to be like a holiday nice thing. Um, most things in the future will be priced one, uh, well, mostly to actually support the channel. This hoodie, if we do this exact hoodie, is expensive at cost. So just a fair warning right now. Uh, it's, it's not going to be a cheap hoodie cost is over $40. I'm trying to remember what it exactly is, but it might, it might even be over 50 for us. I don't know what the manufacturer's costs are. Um, anyway, and then Hugh bought a forest mug says, love the show. Let's go forest for the win. Well, Hugh, nobody's perfect. Um, did any come in while I was, yeah, one came in while I was doing that park. Got I'm wondering about the yellow. Marks. I'm wondering about the yellow on that and how it would work with green screen color. I think it's distinctly different enough, but I'll test it here in a minute. Um, Park bought six mugs. Uh, Dave Arden, Aaron, Matt Forrest, and Jimmy. Wait, who's missing in that? Ben. Ben. Oh, I love Ben's. Here's the thing I'm going to do for you, Park. If it was like because the price was getting up there, I am going to refund you for mine and Matt's. So we're going to give you, you back 33, what does that come out to? 1666 twice is 3332? I'm going to make it 3333. Uh, and because I want to is the reason I'm going to put in here. So now if you want, you can take that refund and get you a Ben mug too. You'll still get it. The order's still coming. I've just refunded 3333 for you. Bada bing, bada boom. I like doing stuff like this. I don't know. Yeah, there me. will be mugs and, and shirts and products and things down the line that are going to be like the no, 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 you're done or a hang up thing or whatever else. This was a specific end of the year holiday limited edition mug thing. Fun. Yeah, it's a fun thing. Like, oh, I wish I wish there was something else for Matt other than, you know, your gay ho ho homie. Cool. I, I'll, I'll sell you whatever you want. 
but we're we're trying to make sure we do good stuff and right now we're having fun yeah yeah nice little end of the year fun uh all right i'm just gonna let the screener know only theist from here out because we've got a bunch of atheists lining up yep and we got a guy that's been on hold for almost an hour and a half so let's knock that out cool jeremiah jeremiah in illinois pronouns he him wants to talk about the paradox that cost him his faith welcome hey, jeremiah. how you doing there everyone you guys hear We're me okay well. yep awesome well first of all great to finally talk to you guys i'm huge fans of both of you um so yeah um the uh the issue kind of started when uh i went overseas and um you know uh People on our side uh, died. People on their side, not so great. Didn't feel great about it. Uh, we had a chaplain there who would talk to us all the time, and he would do the the whole story about God has a plan. God is omniscient. He knows everything that's going to happen, uh, which then got me started thinking about, well, did he know before those guys were born that they were going to die on this day and go to hell? Then I started thinking even more about it and like, okay, well, what about like the people on North Sentinel Island who, who never heard the word of God? And then it went even further back and like, oh, wow, if he knew everything that was going to happen all the time, he planted the tree of knowledge of good and evil, knowing that Adam and Eve were going to pick that fruit. Um, and that, that really kind of spiraled out my faith and uh you know a, a faith that i had obviously since i was born you know uh went to private lutheran schools all throughout my life uh and then it <sighs> trying to explain it a little bit i guess that's that's a pretty decent way of explaining it um i guess like the question would be is um with that being the case free will would then not exist uh, because if everything that you have done or will do is known, then you don't have a choice in what you do at that point. Uh, and I don't think I hear that a lot in some of like the bigger debates. Uh, like for recently, I, I watched uh, Matt, I watched your uh, debate with uh, Jordan Peterson and Jordan Peterson had gone on a tangent about uh, something dealing with, well, that's, that's the, the wonder of free will. That's why God gave us free will. And I'm just screaming at the TV, no, he didn't. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, is that, I guess I, I know quite a bit about like, you know, religion and atheism. I'm not as well versed in, I guess, the, uh, the rules of debate. And I'm wondering if this is like a knock it out of the park gotcha, or does the other side have like a like a nuclear weapon that I'm not aware of? So, first of all, um, uh, wow, this has nothing to do with rules of debates or anything else. Um, mm -hmm. The it takes a very specific God concept to completely on its own nullify free will. The God needs to be the creator of the universe, knowing everything that will happen in that universe and could have created a different universe. If all three of those things are in place, then that God made every decision and you didn't specifically if, for example, God just knows what will happen, it's possible that you still made those decisions just that God knows what your de your decisions are. God didn't decide anything. He, he, and if God is watching all of time as if it's um, a film, uh, so he knows the ending and everything's going to happen, it could still be the case that you made all of those decisions. If God created this universe knowing everything that would happen, but he couldn't have created any other universe, er, you know, it's the, this is the only possible universe, then it doesn't, you know, it, that's not an imposition on your will. It has to specifically be that there's a God who picked this universe 
from all possible universes, knowing what would happen, at which point, with those three elements, you no longer have anything at all, like anything at all, like free will. But you don't need to do that because the notion of libertarian free will is already dead. And there's no reason to think that we have that sort of free will. And that's the sort of free will that Christianity and other religions like that rely on their necessarily being. And so in debates about religion, it doesn't do me any good to to engage on this. I, it depends on which God model my opponent has. Um, but at the end of the day, to say, oh, if God exists, we don't have free will is a waste of time if, in fact, we don't have free will anyway, which a lot of people are convinced that we don't have free will. Like me, I'm, f I'm convinced we have a version of will how free it is is another issue, but we definitely don't have uh, libertarian free will. And so at the end of the day, you're like, if God doesn't exist, then the sky is blue. Okay, the sky is blue. So what? It, it, it doesn't do anything. Could you define libertarian free will? Because I'm not sure if I'm familiar with that. Libertarian is the, libertarian is the liber, libertarian free will is the idea that you could have done something else. If you were to rewind time and play it again, that something else could have happened as an act of your volition. Oh, okay. So it's more of just based on who your opponent is and what their definition of God or uh, omniscience is. Because I've heard the, the, oh, well, God knows what your decisions will be. Uh, I don't know if I'm fully convinced that that even justifies as uh you know a, as a counter to that you know because if god knows what your decisions will be but he sends you to hell for that decision anyway then what's the difference between that and not having free will i suppose um okay so is there any movie you've seen twice oh sure did you know everything that was going to happen the second time Yes. Does that mean that those characters were, that you made all their decisions for them? Interesting. Mormons go a slightly different direction with it, where it's, uh, God knows everything, but he can't hold you responsible for anything until you do it. It's basically the same as the, like, people who say, um, in parts of the country, you can threaten to kill somebody, but that's covered by freedom of speech. Uh, in certain ways, you can threaten to kill somebody until you actually attempt to kill somebody or kill somebody. Um, that's when they actually hold you responsible. I don't know if you remember, that was a big part of the Tiger King controversy because yeah, dude was just saying he was going to kill Carol Baskin all the time, all the time. And the, the police literally said, we believe in freedom of speech here in Tennessee. Until he actually does something, we don't do anything. Yeah, I think there was a, another meme where there was a guy who was saying, like, I'm here to tell you yeah. that you cannot say, I'm going to kill the president. No, you can, absolutely cannot say that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's the same sort of concept of, of until you do it, you can't be held responsible, even if there's an obvious intention and that that's what's going on. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, for feeling that question and aw awesome talking to you guys. I'm 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 a little bit uh, starstruck. <laughs> yeah, you'll get over it. <laughs> Lower but your thanks. standards yeah. <laughs> or yeah. raise them. Raise your standards. There's a lot. There, there's a lot low. more to this. There, there there's a lot more to this, and I'm glad that you got some food for thought. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'd also recommend you know stew on it for a little bit, think about it, and then possibly um come back with more questions and uh we'll Will see do. what we can do from there i think shannon q might have a, either a good video or good discussion uh go to her channel if you need to email her she might know the link to it but on the contradictions of omnipotence omniscience and something else simultaneously <clears throat> i think she has a pretty good video on it I know Shannon I've heard, Q, you said? Yeah, I know I've heard a rant about it, but I'm pretty sure she actually has it in a in a spot somewhere. I, I'm I'm gonna feel like shit if it's on this channel, but it might be. But I think it's I, well, I will definitely check it out. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Jeremiah.
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Have a great, wonderful uh, New Year's. Bye bye. Thanks too. There was a Muslim caller had had. There was a Felix. I don't know why. Unless Felix, Felix, if you're perfect Dawa, then don't call back in. If you were, if that was your news, because I feel like he's called in as Felix before, but I could be wrong. But there was a Muslim caller who was calling to defend that Sharia law is the only way for worldly justice. And I was waiting to hear that rationale. Yeah. Yeah. We going on? No. Yep. I'm going to go to Frank. Frank in Illinois, an atheist, pronouns he, him, uh, has questions for us, and we'll do our best to not suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me on. Um, my, I, I watch you guys all the time. I've considered myself an atheist or a skeptic for, I don't know, a couple of years. I haven't really... Um, come out to my family and I have a very big, uh, immediate family. Uh, I'm the youngest of nine, but, uh, my, my question is, um, there's going to be a get together between the family that is still alive in a couple of months. And I've got a brother that is, I like to call him a Catholic on steroids. He is also a QAnon uh, conspiracist. He, there is no conspiracy that he uh, does not uh, subscribe to. Now, I have another brother who uh, is evangelical, who absolutely hates the uh, Catholic uh, religion. And uh, if we get all of us in the room together, I don't know how to, I, I feel like I'm going to have to be the voice of reason. Um, and I don't know how to do it without being argumentative. Um, but I, I would like some advice on how to handle the two sides and then insert my side of all religion is bullshit without saying all religion is bullshit. If, if, if I'm making any sense to you. Uh, Matt, if you don't mind, I want to, I, I just want to go first because I have two citations to offer. Um, go. And then, so the two, I, I just want to put this at the beginning is anybody with a clip might be figuring out two really great resources for what you're describing. I can't find the clip, but John Oliver actually had a video about how to change somebody's mind. Uh, and I don't remember what it was called. So you might have to do some Googling to find it, but it was excellent. But the second one that I found really good there's a book by Stephen Hassan. He's the guy who developed the bite model, uh, talks about cults and stuff. He's not perfect. He's, it's like a lot of people that we've uh, uh, talked about, a lot of different people we recommend books from who are kind of shitty on some issues. But as far as the bite model and cult stuff goes, it's great. The book is called The Cult of Trump, and I think it's, ch it's either chapter 9 or chapter 11, but I think it's chapter 11 is – after all of these chapters about the different ways uh, uh, the the – diehard Trump people resemble a cult and talking about all that stuff. He dedicates a chapter to basically like, if you feel like it's hopeless, here's how to have conversations with those people. And it is excellent. It is a really, really good, uh, I might pull it up on my Kindle and see if I can verify the chapter while Matt talks about it. But, um, those are two resources that I highly, highly recommend. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, I don't know that I, I have a whole lot to add to it because for me, the first thing that kind of crops up is how much do you really want to engage on these topics? Is is it essential that you even have the discussion about those things? You know, you're like, oh, how do I fix what's wrong in my family? Fuck, if I knew there'd be nothing wrong in my family. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like, despite the fact that I engage on these subjects on a regular basis, I don't really engage on these subjects with my family members that I've matter of fact, I didn't spend any time really with my family members, um, for the holidays this year. And it, it's, it's not that I wouldn't have the discussion. It's that we we've reached a point where I'm not sure how any real progress is likely to be made. And 
un until I know how we're likely to make progress, it's kind of like when I was having the discussion earlier, if you don't know what methods are likely to produce effective results, I don't know how to, how to, uh, how to make a uh, decision about which methods to use. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, and I've also talked to a couple of, uh, it seems, it seems that the only rational people in my family are my sisters. And it's, and we have talked about this. Are, are we going to allow both of these, um, huge egos in the same room because sparks are going to fly. And when they do fly, um, I guess what's the, you know, we're all discussing what's the best way to, uh, tamp them out, you know, little fires here and there everywhere. But, um, it, I, I, can, I think you're right. I think uh, there's no way that I'm going to convince keep the peace, either though. one of them that they're, yeah. that they're wrong about their religion. If the, if the I goal mean, is I, to I keep the peace, that fact. if the goal is to keep the peace, then you point out you two are creating conflict. Neither one of you is able to present a, uh, a valid argument supported by objectively verifiable evidence for your beliefs. There's a reason that you guys are both going to wind up relying on faith and both of you are going to deny if we can, we can come up with sources and you'll deny those sources. And this is a left-wing source. or this is a satanic source and you can do this on it. We've watched this happen over and over and over again. Can we just fucking get together as a family, set aside the things, that we already know you believe that we don't share and focus on the things that we share and care about. Otherwise, why should I keep interacting? If, if you guys are going to be here to preach or try to, to convert or take over a family interaction and make it about you and your beliefs, then either you don't need to come or we're going to stop coming. But if you can get along and say, you know what? The two of you can go off and argue whenever the fuck you want, but you only have this time to be with your family members. That, that's as close as I can get to, to a keep the peace thing. I did find it. It's, chap I love it. it's chapter nine, and the uh, title of chapter nine is How to Undo Mind Control, which it's not magical mind control. The book is called The Cult of Trump. A leading cult expert explains how the president uses mind control, referring to in the bite model how two of the uh, thought and emotion control are two of the um, hallmarks of a cult. Uh, so chapter nine of that book. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And yeah. uh, thank you, Matt, for, uh, for your input too. Um, it's been sure. very helpful because I, I you know, I, I find myself, I, I can't, I, I cannot deal with bullshit. And that's what both sides, even though they're completely opposite, there's still complete bullshit in my opinion. And if you guys don't mind, I would like to ask one more question. Yeah, real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to add this too, because I just checked. Uh, so I don't know if everybody knows this, but uh, Spotify premium recently added a shit ton of audio books. Uh, I've been re-listening to poly secure cause I'm polyamorous. It's a book about that. Anyway, I just checked. If you have Spotify premium, the cult of Trump is one of the books you can listen to for free. Uh, if you have premium, so I shouldn't say for free, if you have premium, uh, the cult of Trump is included on premium. So, uh, now a way that lots of people, cause I think uh, it seems like most people have Spotify premium. I certainly do. Um, I don't even know what Spotify premium is. Yeah. For it, it used to just be Spotify without ads, but now it's podcast audio books. And we're talking like good audio books, not, not, uh, uh, not like some of the other free uh, where it's like, they're not making any money anyway, anywhere else. So the, we're just dumping them on here services. So anyway, uh, just thought I'd let you know that, uh, Frank, in case you have Spotify premium, that book that I recommended is actually on there. I do have it. And thank you for that. Uh, I will definitely check into it. Cool. Can I ask one more question? Yep. Go for it. Off topic. Okay. I've, I've heard you guys talk about, uh, numbers five. And it, and it piqued my interest and I had to look it up for myself and it blew me away. It absolutely blew me away that that 
is really something that people buy into. And I think it's an argument that to me is definitive that it's the the Bible itself is bullshit. But I've heard you guys say it's not a definitive argument. Can you kind of explain that or or am I even wrong about that your opinion? I don't know that I'm one of the people who've made this argument. You're well, not one of the people? Okay, so you, you think it's a, a definitive thing to say, this is absolute bullshit. I mean, am, am I right in saying that? I, I don't want to put words no, in your I, mouth. I, I'm but... saying I don't have a Numbers 5 specific argument to affirm or deny the reality of the Bible. Matt, do you? No, and, and I don't know if I recall Numbers 5 off the top of my head. It's the one about telling Moses to... Uh, take everybody out of camp who has an infection. <laughs> that's, that's all I know from well, Numbers 5. It's, uh, the one I remember is more detailed than that. It's about if, if a woman is unfaithful, uh, bring this woman to, to the uh, priest oh, the, or whatever. You're talking about the one that people bring up to say that the Bible abor- endorses abortion. abortion. And I don't think that yes. it proves that the Bible endorses abortion at all. No. Can you can you say why you don't believe that? Because that's so even if so the specifics of that are if you suspect that your wife has been unfaithful, you do this. So there's a criteria there under which you put them under under basically God's judgment and God will decide what ends up happening. This has nothing to do with, I'm pregnant and do not wish to be. Yeah, it, it's, it's more ritualistic. It just happened to be the case that it may have induced uh, miscarriages, but that wasn't their intention with it at all. It, it absolutely, no, no, this is absolutely, they're giving them, this is a recipe for an abortifacient. But the Bible doesn't say, here's a recipe for how you can terminate your pregnancies. That's not what this is. Yeah, and in their ritual, unless I'm wrong, in the ritual, it was only supposed to work. So again, they don't know that it's an abortion medicine because they think it's a medicine that will, it's only going to work if she was unfaithful, correct? It doesn't work if it, if it turns out she wasn't. Can I yeah. uh, put some input into that? Go for it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, don't people, religious people, Christians in general, say that the gift of life is the best gift that God has ever given? And I don't know if that, that is. The I case, don't know. I don't know who says that or how it's relevant. Right, and and the answer would be some, but God, the Bible is full of God killing babies. So let's not. Clearly, they have ways to work around that, that when it comes to God, God is allowed to decide. Remember, more uh, more zygotes and more embryos never make it to term than do make it to term. In fact, I think it's so many zygotes that it's more people never even are aware that they are pregnant than the number of babies, uh, that they were very briefly pregnant than the number of babies who are born each year. So this, God commits the most abortions of all. And, and this is an example yeah, of that. Yeah, I would agree with that. This is an example of that. Because the, the, the numbers five thing about adultery is if you suspect that your wife's been fucking around, then you do this. Yeah. And if she has been, God will kill her baby. And if she hasn't been, then she will conceive. This is not at all. This has nothing to do with abortion. It, it is not about somebody's pregnant and wants to terminate at all. Right. Um, what it is, is in the same way that, you know, Onan uh, was commanded to have sex with his dead brother's wife. And when he would have sex with her, he would pull out and spill his seed on the ground. Um, he wasn't punished for masturbation, which is what some people tried to spin it as. And he wasn't punished for spilling his seed on the ground. It's not spilling your seed on the ground that is the sinful part of it. It is not masturbation that is the the sinful part of it. It was disobedience to God. 
God said, knock your brother's wife up. And Onan said, well, I'll go through the motions, but I'm not actually going to do it. And so when you try to spin it as if it's opposed to masturbation or if it's opposed to the rhythm method or whatever else, yeah. you're ignoring what the book's actually about. And this passage about adultery is about, hey, I think my wife went and had sex with somebody else. And, and at that time, you didn't have paternity tests and you didn't want to be cuckolded and you didn't want to have to raise somebody else's bastard. And so you went through these steps and virtually the, the, the real travesty here is that this recipe is almost always going to cause an abortion, which means whether that woman had sex with somebody else or not, she will then be treated as an adulteress. Yeah. That's the travesty here. Frank, can, can you wonderful. at least acknowledge, so regardless of if you want to get sort of pedantic about the fact that it, an abortion is occurring in the Bible— can you acknowledge that it absolutely nowhere in that verse or in those verses, it is not granting autonomy to women. In fact, it is taking autonomy away from women. Yeah. The whole thing is oh, because yeah. she's proper. I agree. And so it's hard to say, see, here's biblical proof that God's down with abortion when the political position pro-choice position is autonomy granting. Whereas yeah. what, what if all the Christians agree with you and then go, you know what? You're right. So from now on, here's how we will decide which women get abortions. That would be just as bad, potentially worse than the no abortions for anybody. We will fascistically rule on who, who must abort and whatever. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, it's not a verse that you should, anyone should consider progressive. And then my last point to you, Frank, before we move on is, let's just say it did say that. Kind of in the same way that I don't call myself a Satanist, like we talked about the other day, but, but I like Satanists and I like a lot of what the Satanist temple does. Even if it did say God is fine with women having autonomy and abortion and, and uh, uh, getting abortions— Yes, you could use that to point out hypocrisy, but I would not f make that the foundation of any pro-choice argument because I would keep religion completely out of it. And so that's why I, I, regardless, again, I'm only going to attack hypocrisy when it comes to the religion. I'm not going to say like, oh, I don't do it with queer stuff, even though there is stuff in the Bible uh, and, and, and stuff that people who we know who are scholars and researchers are like, actually, these different things in here where it's about homosexuality or whatever, the original context is actually this and this. I don't even bother with that shit. I should be allowed to be gay because I live in America where there's separation of church and state. You can't force me to join your religion. You can't force me to practice your religion. I'm not going to try to win them over on the doctrine when at the end of the day, they're just going with what makes them feel bad and icky is what God's will is for the entire universe because it's in their little book. I, it's, it's not a useful way to engage, I don't think. That's why I love this show because you guys just explain thing, things so carefully, so to the point and make me reconsider my arguments. And that's, that's just why I love this show. And I, I thank you for Thanks, taking Frank. my call. And um, I, uh, I'll let you get on to some other callers, but um, I do appreciate you uh, entertaining my thoughts and uh, giving me good advice. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. Cool. Thanks, man. Have a good one. As soon as the compliments were coming in, I was like, all right, I'm good to go. We can wrap it yep. up. <laughs> like, <laughs> I hit my limit. Don't tell me you love me. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna cap calls where they are, but I assume you want to take both of those. Yeah, we definitely do. All right, so we got a couple of theists lined up. A couple of things, real quick. Um, we're gonna get uh, theists in here. I would like to finish the show with two theistic balls that are actually good and productive. So I'm going to reiterate what tends to happen here. Please pause. Don't try to make 10 points. We're going to interrupt. We're going to need clarification. We want to have understanding. Um, and all I really care about is tell me what you believe and why, or ask whatever question you've got and listen to the actual answer and think before just saying whatever. I'm not, I'm not saying like, for example, our first caller here is uh, DeAndre, who's uh, in New Orleans. DeAndre may be the best caller we've ever had. I'm not, you know, 
determining ahead of time this is going to be bad. I'm just saying I, I want there to be really good calls. So DeAndre in New Orleans, pronouns he him, has a question uh, or says he believes in God because of something about the Big Bang or before the Big Bang. So welcome, DeAndre. You're on with Jimmy and Matt. Uh, hello, Jimmy. Hello again, Matt. Hey. Hello. I, yeah, this time, um, last time, last few times I called, it was pretty much about my the conspiracy theorist beliefs, but now I want to get into why I believe in religion. Yeah, Do you I have kind a of particular remember religion? you, I think, but yeah, go for it. Uh, what was that? Do you have a particular religion or is it just your own? Um... For the longest time, I've been Christian, so I, I, I haven't been to church in a while, but I tend to default to maybe that, to like one God, uh, though occasionally I do think, I, I've lately been thinking there's multiple gods lately. Okay. So why do you believe in any gods at all? Okay. I believe, I believe because, I, well... For a few reasons. One reason is because essentially what caused the Big Bang to happen. From what I know, the Big Bang, some scholars say it happened when there was an explosion of expanse, like explosion of matter. Others say it was something completely different. I'm not sure what they say. It's really uh, easy. Reason I it's, it's really easy, DeAndre. We have no idea why the Big Bang occurred when we have no way to explore it. Okay. Yeah, ultimately, I do know we have, there's literally, there's probably like no way we will be ever, ever be able to discover why or how it exactly it happens. But after that, okay. I tend just to fall back on like every single, well, every single faith or culture has some type of God or some type of religious belief or creation. Myth. So, so maybe what? is there some belief in it? some truth to it so the fact the fact that many different people have believed similar things doesn't tell you whether or not those similar things are true or likely to be true right there yes it's true so if we care about the truth and we want to get to the truth and we want to say hey what's the best explanation for why the big bang occurred right now our answer is i don't know we don't have any way to explore it. We can't even invest. The math breaks down at the Planck time. We can't go beyond that. And if time began with the Big Bang, then it's absurd to say the, the, the phrase before the Big Bang is absurd from our view of time. And so there's sense breaks down at that point. And so if we're stuck and we say, you know what? We don't know why what would we need to do to overcome that I don't know answer and actually be warranted by evidence and reason to say, I think I do know what, what would, what would justify that? What would justify me knowing like, or it's like saying, what, let me, let me, let me give a, let me let me give a quick example or analogy so this might make sense if you walked out into your backyard and there was a dead bald eagle and you wanted to find out how a dead bald eagle got into your backyard what steps would you take to try to investigate it um i guess Check to see what it will potentially die by. See if there's any bite marks or wounds on it. Yep, that would be a start. And and for whatever reason, we find nothing out of the ordinary. Um, it doesn't look like it was shot. It's just, I mean, it looks like, you know, we can't, we we don't find anything to say. Oh, it had a heart attack while it was flying or whatever. It just looks like it's dead. We we find nothing that we can identify as a cause of death. But also the question was, how did this dead eagle get into my backyard? It wasn't, how did this dead eagle die? Do we, do we think somebody threw it in the backyard? Do we think it landed out of the sky? Do we think God put that dead eagle in the backyard? Those are three answers. How do we know which of those is most likely? Uh, huh. We, 
we don't. We, we don't at that time. We really don't know. We can't make any determination because we don't have anything to go on. Yeah. I think there are things that we could do given the example that I gave to investigate, but I would agree that we don't currently know at that point. So if the, if the issue of the universe is that we don't have any way to explore the beginning when the big bang occurred, and we don't know what the candidate explanations are, then the right answer when somebody says, what caused the big bang is we don't know. The right answer can't be, it's likely a God. Until such time as someone demonstrates that there is a good reason to think that a God should be considered a candidate explanation and that it's the most likely. It's the same thing as with the dead eagle in my backyard. If there is a God, then that God could be the explanation for why there's a dead eagle in my backyard. But I don't get to even consider that a candidate explanation until somebody demonstrates why that should be considered one of the candidates, right? Right. Okay, so why do you believe in a God? <clears throat> okay. After that, it's, uh, I guess, ultimately because it, ultimately, because it makes you feel good. It just... You, you should, so should, you, you feel, should believe in things because they, you, they make you feel good. Yes, that, that's pretty much, it just, also, if, since my, my early beliefs, since there's no evidence to them and there, there's no way to test them or to prove them, and it's just ultimately, at the end of the day, it just makes me feel good. It just makes me feel... Real quick, good, DeAndre, good to believe it. Before, before I assume what you mean by that, are you saying that you are recognizing that that's why you believe it, but that's not a good re reason to believe it, or are you saying the fact that it makes you feel good is also a good reason to believe it? I mean, ultimately, I believe that, I do believe that if you, if you find something you like and, and believe in and it doesn't hurt people, it should be right to believe in it in a sense everyone has the right to believe in it are you saying it should be your right to believe in it or that it is right and okay to believe in something which you you put a qualifier on there that might be impossible but what were you saying you should have the right or that it is right no no it's uh, so are you asking me is my religion right because i believe it no, 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 no. You said that you believe if a person has a belief and it doesn't hurt anybody, and then the sentence it sounded like you were saying was, then it should be right to believe it. And I wasn't understanding if you were saying that it is right as in fine, correct, or good to believe it, or if you were saying that they should have the right to believe it because it hurts nobody else. I was just asking him to okay, clarify. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Um, yeah, pretty much both, I guess. Uh -uh both okay so i agree with everyone should have the right to believe even harmful beliefs frankly uh but as far as the qualifier you put on that it doesn't hurt anybody i have yet to find a faith based belief that i don't believe does at least some harm to people i mean at a minimum it does harm to you because if you believe something that's not true it prevents you from finding the truth because if you think you have the truth, you're not going to go looking for a different explanation. Now, I think that you have the right to harm yourself. And of course you have the right to believe as your conscience dictates and it, you can believe whatever makes you feel good. But the question then I, I have is do you, if you care about what's true, do you care about what's true more than you care about what makes you feel good? Like, for example, let, let's imagine, DeAndre, that you have um, clogged arteries for your heart. Would you want to know that, or would you want to keep believing that your heart is fine because that makes you feel good? I, I'd want to know about it. I'd want to know if I was Me too. something like that. Now... If there was a God, 
and there was some way of knowing, would you want to know, or would you just be fine believing in some other God? Because if you believe in some God that doesn't exist, and there's a real God, and that real God is a jealous God, I, I would say that it would be pretty dangerous to believe in the wrong God, wouldn't it? I mean, you know, in that case, it, it would be dangerous, but but even if if God was that jealous or that evil or the cruel to just to punish me for not for believing in something different, I wouldn't want to yeah. worship him anyway. I, I'm with you. I, I would I would believe he existed. I wouldn't necessarily I would definitely wouldn't worship him, although you know, there's lots of questions. So it seems to me that you're saying you believe and possibly believe there are many gods because it makes you feel good and you don't think it hurts anybody. How many other things do you believe because it makes you feel good and it doesn't hurt anybody? I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting there aren't any. I'm just like, you know, in, in most situations, people tend to care about the truth. And in this situation, you're saying, I, I'd like to care about the truth, but I'm not sure I have access to the truth. So I guess I'm just going to go with whatever feels good to me as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. And you're entitled to do that. But do you think anybody else should respect that or share that belief? I mean, what if somebody came, what if somebody came to you and said, Hey, I believe that men are better than women. I don't ever vote based on this. I just, I don't vote at all. Um, I believe that men are just better than women across the board, that we are of higher value, but I don't take any steps to enforce that belief onto anybody else. I will never legislate it. Um, it'll never be nothing. I'm just, this is just my personal belief. Uh, is that okay? I mean, I, we realize they have the right to, but is that a belief someone should hold for those reasons? It's no, because it's a, well, it's a, it's, that's a, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have that belief. No, it shouldn't be respected or that belief shouldn't be Why? respected at all. Okay. But if it makes me feel good and it doesn't hurt anybody, what's wrong with it? Because it, it's the way you're thinking. You're going in life thinking that women are just lesser or inferior. It, inferior to men. It's a bad way to think. It's a bad way to live your life. Even if you don't vote on it or enforce it, it's just, it, it's really, I, it, it's a bad way. But it's why is bad. it bad, DeAndre? Well, why? Because DeAndre, are men better than women? You said are men better than women? I'm asking, yeah. No, they're right. So, for, so, so the, it, it's untrue, it correct? That's correct. So, isn't the problem not that it's bad because we could live in a reality where somehow it was true? It's not that it's bad. It's that it's untrue because say, here's the, here's the problem I have DeAndre with the, with the, and I've done this rant a million times, so I'm sorry I'm doing it again, but here's my problem with the people who say, but mine doesn't hurt anybody. Foundationally, you still believe on the basis of faith. So if you come to a person and they have a harmful thing based on faith and you have a non-harmful thing based on faith, if that's possible, and you say, I can have my belief because it doesn't hurt anybody, but you can't because yours does. That person can easily say, are there things which are true that are harmful? And you would have to admit, yes, cancer exists. Evil exists. People murder. There are lots of harmful things that are true. There's lots of harmful things in reality. So that person who now says, okay, so you've established that it's not about a belief isn't justified based on whether it's bad or good because bad things exist. So now the two things we have left in common are just faith. 
and you're saying it's okay for you to believe based on faith, but not me for a reason that doesn't actually demonstrate if something is true or not. It only demonstrates whether to your sensibilities you believe it is good or you believe it is bad. So a Muslim can come to you and say, I believe it, and I think it is good, and you say, no, it's bad because Islam is harmful to gay people and it's harmful to women, and they can say, no, I believe it's good for gay people and good for women because God's will and God's justice is always good for people, no matter who they are. Uh, you're foundationally, you have faith, they have faith, you have no, no rock to stand on to say that your belief is better than theirs, by appealing to because yours is harmless and theirs is harmful because that doesn't di dictate whether something is true or not. It's way too easy. And this is why I say there is no such thing as harmless faith because foundationally you cannot put your belief above anybody else's if you, if you work through everything else. If at the end of the day you say believing something on faith is okay, period, you can't take away somebody else's belief on that basis either. Okay, that that does make a bit of that does that does make a lot of sense. Thank you. It does. At the end of the day, we're both believing on on faith, and we're just having we we both have beliefs that we can't prove in any way. Yeah, so, I, for the record, the other? I Maybe. wish only people who had faith also were mostly harmless. I wish that that was true of everyone who had faith. And if there was some way I could win that argument and it was easier than winning the argument, uh, to winning everybody's mind than just whether God exists or not, I probably would take that approach of just trying to win. You're better off if you're going to have faith doing this, but it's, it's not at the end of the day, it's, it's, it would be hypocritical to apply one standard to one group and not the other. So I, th I think we're at a point where we're all in agreement that the truth matters when it can be known and that the truth is valuable and that if we can't know the truth it's better for us to reserve judgment and to say we don't know yet rather than to pretend that we know the truth because if you pretend you know the truth then you stop looking for the truth and what you believe has consequences and if if the actions that you take on behalf of false beliefs are harmful that's a problem. This is why I've said for ages, I even have a t-shirt. I want to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible because, and you have to have both parts of that. If you want to believe as many true things as possible, you just believe everything. And if you want to believe as few false things as possible, you believe nothing. But if you have a distilled view, what you're saying is I'm going to wait until there's sufficient evidence. I want my internal model of reality in my head to match reality as accurately as possible. And so if I think men are better than women or, you know, uh, Spanish people from Spain are the best um, swimmers in the world, um, if, you know, uh, I don't know, you can make up any, any, anything you want. And maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Oh, the sky is blue because Pixies painted it blue. Um, there are some that are obviously absurd. And then there are some where it's like, you really don't know. Why is there something rather than nothing? Well, I don't even know how to begin addressing that question because how could there possibly be a nothing? And if there was a nothing, wouldn't that be something? Because now you're giving nothing a property of existing. Uh, and I mean, you can go down all of these little paths. And the better path for me is to say, I don't know, but let's see if we can find out what are the candidate explanations for whatever it is we're looking at. Once we have a list of candidate explanations, we can then begin the process of whittling it down to which one is most likely or most probable. And we may be forever stuck at saying, you know what? I don't know. I, I, I know there's four candidate explanations. I think two of them are slightly more likely than, than the third one. I'm unsure about the fourth one, but none of them have sufficient evidence for me to say this is the one that's almost certainly the right one. And we're just, as uncomfortable as that makes us, we're going to have to stick with that for now. But the fact that it makes us uncomfortable is important. The fact that we're not satisfied with saying, I don't know, 
is incredibly important. That's what's driven humanity to every scientific breakthrough and understanding. It's the reason we know that, that Zeus isn't hurling lightning bolts at us, that in fact, this is electrical discharge from you know, bodies of, of different electrical potential. We, we know this stuff because somebody wasn't satisfied with saying, that's Zeus. And that's how we progress. And it's incredibly frustrating to be going, gosh, is there one God? Is there many God? Is there no God? When the answer, as far as I can tell, is I have no idea and I have no reason to think any of them are here. And there are really good arguments that there are none. Because if there was a God and that God wanted us to know it existed, we'd know. And if there was one God and it was one of the ones in one of the major religions, we'd know because any decent God in one of those religions would be saying, hey, those other religions are false. Hey, I'm going to show myself. But if God's going to hide, then we're now in a position where the God that doesn't exist looks identical to us as the one that's pretending not to exist or is hiding. And so the only reasonable position we can have for now is I cannot believe that a God exists until somebody demonstrates that it's a candidate explanation and that it's the most probable candidate explanation, whether it's one God or 50. Okay. Okay. That's it's all, it's all starting to make a, a lot more sense to me. All right. Cool. Uh, uh, I gotta say, thank you. This, these past two weeks, I've, I really been, talk to with a lot of stuff I need to think about going into the next year. Cool. I appreciate you, DeAndre. Thanks for, for calling and thanks for thinking about it and being honest about it in the answers. Um, that's, that's the whole reason we do the show. Have a great new year. Call us back when you have more questions or when you get more answers, when you figure out, Hey, here's the thing where there, you know, I, I went and explored this and I came up with this reason. Is it any good? Call back. And if, if I find a problem with it or Jimmy finds a problem with it, we'll let you know. And if we don't, then we're just going to agree. That's the way it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. cool. That's true. All right. Thank you. And um, happy new year to you both. Thanks, DeAndre. Happy new year, man. Later. We that, need calls like that every now and then to make, to like, as the reminder of like, we do get through to people. <laughs> like I needed yeah. that. <laughs> I, I'm disappointed, though, because there was one more theistic caller that called and hung up and called again and hung up again. Yeah. I was desperate. I'm glad we're going we're gonna to end on that one. We're not yeah. going to wait for that other person to call back in. Felix, um, call back thanks, in DeAndre. Day, please. Yeah, if you're going to call in to say that the world needs, excuse me, the world needs Sharia law for there to be justice, that maybe that's a conversation we shouldn't start so late in the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but call in I, early to hear show. what the justice, yeah. yeah, what the justification was. We're going to move on to some super chats, but before we do, as a reminder, uh, Jimmy's going to have an announcement in just a second. I can tell by the raised finger, but I wanted yeah. to remind everybody, as I always do, uh, that this is only one show on the line. If you found your way here tonight, because there's quite a few people watching, there's a couple thousand people watching on a Wednesday between Christmas and New Year's. I wouldn't have expected that. So thank you, first of all, for tuning in. If you found this because of a post that I made on uh, social media, awesome. That'd be great to know if you found it because you're a regular watcher. If somebody said at Christmas time, oh, yeah, well, why don't you call these guys and show what you, you know, what, cool, you're all welcome to. But there's a lot of shows that take place here on the line. It's a primarily a call-in network. We're starting new shows that focus on uh, debates in, 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 in perhaps a new style. You can go to qnaline.com. Uh, slash inboss to apply to be on inboss. There's a link down below in the comments. In addition to this program, there's also the Transatlantic Call-In Show, which airs tomorrow at 2 p.m. Tomorrow is going to be Arden and Stephanie Holmes. If you've ever been accused of being transphobic and it bothered you, you could call in and find out why. If you've been accused of being transphobic and it made you proud, you can call in and explain why. Uh, if you have questions about trans identity, gender issues, uh, rights, or anything else, that's your opportunity to call in and talk to a couple of real life trans people who can explain to you what their lived experience is, what the laws should be, why they believe what they believe, why they are who they are. All of these things where there's questions are out there. Transatlantic call-in show on Thursdays, 
then on Sundays, the Sunday show, Jimmy and I'll be back this Sunday uh, to engage with more religious believers as well as callers on other subjects. Monday, Skept Talk. Tuesday is Dying Out Loud. I didn't say much about Skept Talk because Forrest is going to be there trying to sell more freaking mugs. Um, <laughs> we have a mug count, by the way. I'll update the mug count. I'm um, getting the messages where it lined up. Hey, here's what I decided I was going to do while uh, that last call was going on, though. Uh, regarding the mugs. This is just something a little bit for fun. I'll tell you actually looking at everything, it literally legitimately is for fun and because I want to reward people who do this sort of thing because doing the math, it it's, I'm happy to do it. It will basically mean we make like a dollar per mug, I think, doing this. But for the rest of the hour, so if you're watching this on replay, just ignore this because this is not for you. Right now it is 8.22 p.m. Central Time. Uh, at 9 p.m. Central Time, this offer will expire. But between now and 9 o'clock, whether the show's still going or not, in the next 38 minutes, anyone who buys all seven mugs, like oh I did for the person before, I will refund $33.33, the cost of two mugs. So you'll get all seven for the price of five. Only for the next, thir- like I said, 37 minutes. If you, if you're, if you don't particularly care that's fine because again, we're not going to really make much off of that. It's I I, I think I, it I breaks a down question, to a dollar per mug, but I want to do it for people who want the whole collection. I have a question. Yeah, if they bought seven of my mugs, would you refund no. two of them? Okay. I want it to be. I, I I this is literally for the not because we're trying to lo- load scores. It's to me for the people who are like I want the whole collection. No, I wouldn't. I do was it I was going to go order seven of my mugs right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> I tell you what, the first person who buys seven of my mugs, send me an email and I'll send you thirty three dollars and thirty three cents. <laughs> uh, you have to prove but that only, order. only to the first person. So if four of you buy seven of my mugs, only one of you is getting the refund. Yeah, because I go broke buying my own mugs. First come, first serve. Um, uh, so much fun. You got, got some super chats? Yeah. Let's do that. You have to steer. This is weird. On Wednesday nights, normally Arden's producing uh, whenever Jimmy's not here. And so I have a little list of super chats where I can just click through them. And today, I just get to sit back and read them. That's right. That's right. Sit back. Enjoy it. That's my lap dance music. Here we go. Did I do this right? 50 fucking dollars from William Mattis. Should have keep bought up three the good mugs. Work. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep up the good work, and here's to the next year being awesome. Thank <laughs> you so much for, for that, William. Um, how, how do you know William didn't buy 20 mugs? I don't know. I'm just saying, with there that $50, go. we do get, so we get more money off of a super chat than a mug sale. So it is to our advantage that you didn't do that, but if you have 50, 50 bucks, I'm just saying, get you three mugs. Same thing. So every someone just asked, what happens if I buy seven forest mugs? Then you will pay for seven forest mugs. If That's somebody right. buys the entire collection, one of each person, person's mugs of the seven who are doing the events, I will refund the cost of two mugs, $33.33. If you do the 15 ounce, I'll figure out what the math is. That would be $48.40 because those are 24, 20 each. Whatever, between now and when the hour is up, 35 minutes from now, Whoever has done that because they want the whole collection, I'll refund that amount. I tell you what, if you buy seven of four smugs, um, we're going to, we're going to stage an intervention and arrange <laughs> for you to have your, your skull examined. Uh, I would say we'll actually charge you double, but I think that's impossible. I don't have a way to, <laughs> I don't have a way to change. I can only refund. I can't do a negative refund. Hobie Wood says happy holidays. Um, that's good. It's Merry Christmas here. No, I'm just kidding. 1999 from Greg Markowski. Matt, I hear you work for Satan. How much do you pay and where can I apply? I'm sorry, Greg. While I appreciate your contributions, I am not allowed to tell you how much Satan pays me, but you can apply by sending another 1999 <laughs> directly to me, skipping all of this line stuff. Um, just, just send it to me directly, PayPal. I will forward that to Satan himself. Yeah. Uh, as soon as he gives me a way to forward it, see what, uh, see if, see if Satan wants to play ball. So I By think the way, he- I got actual Christmas presents that I was going to share. Oh, go ahead. Um, I got a mug and 
the green screen's going to mess with this a little bit, but it says, I may look like I'm listening to you, but in my head, I'm thinking about snakes and that snake's green, which is like, you might be able to see my eye through it. Ah, that's funny. But yes, that was, uh, from my mother-in-law basically. And she also got me this t-shirt, which I was going to wear on the show, but I don't tend to wear t-shirts on the show, but I really like it. Oh, I like that a lot too. Yeah. It's well done. I like that a lot too. Uh, for the record, I also got him some of our mugs for Christmas. They just haven't shown up in time. People are like, wait, so Matt got mugs for Christmas, but not the line mugs. He's got line mugs. And this was, this was from somebody else. Yeah. Here's the uh, updated score since you'd asked about it. Uh, thank you to whoever decided, a few of you decided you wanted them. That made me feel nice. Tomorrow is in last gonna, place. I'm going to have to like buy 10 of hers tomorrow. Y'all got to flood, uh, flood the Transatlantic call and show with mug buys tomorrow. That's right. Though you won't have a live score tomorrow. So actually just do it tonight. Just whatever. Just, you know, buy a bunch of Arden mugs. Let me just see hashtag if, Team Arden all fucking day tomorrow. Let me see if anybody's taken me up so far on the all seven, the entire collection thing here. Uh, I will be reading out your uh, uh, your merch messages here after Super Chats too, but no one yet. Yep. All right. Nope. Thanks, Greg. Moving on. Four ninety nine from Chewy Gad. Chunky peanut butter is just peanut butter with peanuts in it. It's true. It's all one peanut butter is peanut. All peanut butter is peanut butter with peanuts in it. Yeah. It's a one ingredient food. Oh no no! There's more ingredients there's than peanuts. In peanut butter. Yeah, it's oh, there's an oil that's not just peanuts. I know, yeah. So I I know that like if you buy like Jif processed peanut butter, what which I love Jif that they add it. Uh, but you can go to the store and they have the thing that just mashes it into 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 peanut butter. It can use its own peanut oil. You can get your fresh peanut butter that way. It's like a grinder. Well, masher. I thought peanut butter had to be made from dry roasted peanuts, and so you had to add oil. And then you add other stuff like salt and sweeteners. And I mean, I'm sure you can get somebody just like, you know, Hey, here's a handful of peanuts. Okay. Let me smash it. Uh, I, 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 think I know I've bought fresh peanut butter at, I think they have them at H E B, but I know, uh, uh, King supers has the little place you go up and you put a little cup under and it just has peanuts and it puts it in the thing. I don't think there's oil being added, but I, I don't know. I would not want to eat that. It's not that good. I prefer Jif. Yeah. He, normally the peanut butter with a little salt and sugar in it is the, the bare minimum there, but cool. Yeah. $10 from wolf tickets. I really enjoyed the Xmas show, whether or not there's a line con in April, I'm eager to hear if there will be a way to say hi. When my wife and I travel to Austin for the first time that weekend, you're gay homie. Um, so there will be something going on. Yeah. Even if it's not line con. And if, if any viewers of the line are planning to come to Austin pretty much at any time, definitely reach out. I can't guarantee that we'll be able to set aside time to meet you or do a special event or whatever else. But if you actually travel to Austin, I, I, I say there's a chance that we could just, hey, we're going to meet up at this you know, lunch place and, and have a drink or order a pizza or hang out, you know, that kind of stuff, because we'd love to say hi to folks, whether there's a con going on or not. Um, so here's what I'll do. By all means, reach out. I'll throw in the description. So you don't have to We don't have to worry about individual emails and all that kind of stuff. Cause that's where yeah. my shit falls apart in the description of today's episode. I'm going to put our meetup group. We haven't used it in a while. We're going to use it again. It's still uh, technically active and open, but, um, that's realistically where we're going to put it anyway. Uh, atheist uh, or uh, meetup. Um, that'll be the way we publish like, hey, here's what we're going to do for that eclipse and stuff. Uh, we're going to have a meetup event. It just like, like Matt says, it's not going to be a convention. It's not going to be uh, uh, some big thing like that. Uh, it's going to be just us all having a good time. And we'll tell you where we plan to go and look at the, uh, look directly into the sun like Trump. Yeah. Don't look up there. The only an idiot, only a stupid person would look right at it. And then he did. Um, next one. 
Super. Wait, wait, Sorry, go ahead. We skipped that one. Oh, you're right. Uh, $10 from Northern Spike. Time for another trim, Jimmy. Your hair is getting fuzzy. I'm probably growing everything out, to tell you the truth. I like the, I'm liking a little length on top, and I'm, uh, my beard I accidentally trimmed too short. I did a little, I, I did a little slip, and so I trimmed yeah. all this down. To, I'm not purposefully trying to do the long goatee and the shorter beard at the same time as Matt is doing. I'm not trying to copy Matt on purpose at the moment. I'm trying uh, I, to grow everything I, I, out together. I cut my hair today just before the show, as I do on many Wednesdays, not all of them, but many of them. But um, the only reason this is longer is because it's existed longer. I'm basically trying to grow all of this out. So it's the same length and it won't actually get much longer. I've, I've got it combed back. If I were to pull it out front, that's yeah. almost the, l I mean, it might get maybe an inch and a half longer before it just stops. But if I do this, then I get a beard that almost looks like it's uniform, uh, and maybe it will in a month. Then maybe I will keep trimming to this, because it sounds like you're saying your plans for your beard are the exact same as mine, and I uh, yeah. I have enough uh, accusations my of plans, trying to be a Dillahunty clone. My plans for my beard are uh, to keep going as long as Arden goes, ooh, I like your beard growing in. I do like the, uh, yeah, I've, I, I told you that several times. It took Arden telling him that he, that, that he looks good with that uh, side face beard. Side face beard. No one listens to me. Well, I am. I just, just kidding. She's got priority. $5 from Logan Jacobs. Matt, have you played Baldur's Gate 3? If so, any thoughts? Um, so I bought it, as did Arden and my brother. Arden and my brother both got refunds. I played a few minutes too long to get a refund, and then I stopped playing. Uh, and it's it's not that it's a bad game. I am. It's just not my kind of game. They hate. He says that now. I have listened to both of them rant about how it is an objectively terrible game. I think it's the best game of 2023, and it's not particularly close. Best game, not just of 2023. It's my favorite game since Satisfactory, which I'm playing again right now. And then before that, Skyrim. Ooh, Brad's saying he want. I'm making him want to say some brother stuff right now about the haircut. Well, you could say whatever you want. I'm. I think I'm missing a story, but Brad knows my memory better than anybody. Uh, Baldur's Gate. I I had problems with, but I didn't play it long enough. Yeah. Um. To really give a, a good review of it, I would say it is not at all friendly to new players. Um, who aren't familiar with the newest D and D stuff? Maybe I, I would say it's definitely more fun for people who like the newest D and D stuff. I got Eric in chat. We actually play Baldur's Gate three together. Yeah, I just love that game. Anyway, I think this one's is easy. This one's $5 Skeptics and Scoundrels. Did Janeway murder Tuvix? Yes. Correct answers only, please. That's the only correct answer. Janeway is a moral monster on a number of occasions, but killing Tuvix was absolutely murder. What, what are we talking about? This is from Star Trek Voyager, where oh. two characters, Tuvok and Neelix, were merged in a transporter accident that created a new person, Tuvix, who was a blending of those characters. And because Janeway and other people in the crew wanted their friends back, Janeway figured out a way to force Tuvix into a transporter in order to extract the two previous people. Now, set aside all the bullshit about Star Trek's transporter problems and everything else, and the fact that any solution that would have resulted in that could have been identical of, of creating all three of them. But Janeway murdered Tuvix. Word. Uh, nineteen ninety nine just murdered him, but it was wrong. 1999 was from wrong. Ether Childress. This Christmas night, my dad stumbled onto Matt's discussion with Jordan Peterson. And it was the first time he'd paid attention and agreed with an atheist on those types of videos. Christmas miracle or not, I'm getting closer to coming out. Wow, I'm that coming. that really means a lot. Thank you, I, because that was a, a a good conversation that is never likely to happen again. Um, 
and and is bizarre. So to hear that somebody else got something good out of it and that it might extend out beyond like just an individual, that means a lot. Thank you, Ether. I've shared that video a ton of times because it is for atheists who are still seduced by his ridiculousness. It's one of the easiest ways to show him, look, he's using the exact same language and the exact same methods that you don't see a problem with when he's talking about things you don't like, which let's be realistic. It's that you don't like trans people. Uh, look how he uses that same sort of stupid talk about something when you actually already know why he's wrong about it. And, and that conversation it's yeah, just useful to make him talk about atheism, belief in God, that kind of stuff for whatever it was an hour, an hour and a half to expose him for the fraud of a thinker that he is. Yeah. Five dollars from entangled loam. Easy way to get banned. Say Janeway did nothing wrong. <laughs> Tuvix was a mistake. And the moral quantity was how annoying the writers made his character. Uh Matt, you're gay, homie. I'm not gonna ban anybody for being wrong about Tuvix. You're allowed to be wrong. Twenty dollars from the Eagle fan. Buy Forest Mug. It's obviously the best one. You know, you could have bought a mug with that twenty dollars. Yep. But instead you tried to stir the pot. Four ninety nine from Donkey Butt, which that's just funny. How can I stop fearing non existence? I feel similar to Jim from earlier. Cool. The best w way of addressing this I've ever heard of is to think about how much it bothered you to not exist before you were born. You're that's not going to, the biggest fear that we have about non-existence is tied up in this notion that you're going to like experience non-existence, but you're not, you won't know that you don't exist. Sure. FOMO is a thing too. I, I, Matt and I, we've talked about this a few times and we were slightly different on this. I am not convinced that for most people, you can successfully stop fearing non-existence. We clearly have a biological drive to be alive that seems to drop off as we get closer to death. Now, I don't think Matt's particularly close to death. Uh, uh, closer than you. you. Sure. I, I hope. Probably. <laughs> uh, Probably. Right, right, right. But um, the, the, we clearly have a biological drive to stay alive. Even people who often have suicidal feelings and are deeply depressed when put into an experience where suddenly a threat of death comes on, their brain hits on, they do that fight or flight response and at least momentarily try. And, and so you are activating that. There's things happening with your, uh, your systems it, it, when you're even just thinking about the possibility of dying and stuff. And so the non-existence part and the fear of missing out on what would come after and that idea of like the one that like really freaks me out is the moment I am dead will certainly be the moment I stop perceiving uh, uh, the passage of time. Now it might even be before that. If any of you have undergone anesthesia, you'll know that there are ways to not at all perceive the passage of time. When you regularly sleep, you can kind of sometimes tell how long you've been asleep or if you've been at least an adequate amount, but with anesthesia, you, you can't tell the difference between being under for 20 hours versus one hour. It feels the exact same to everybody. Um, and so to me, the idea of the thing that like freaks me out when I think about it is the second after I stop perceiving the passage of time will be identical to the remaining time left for the universe relative to my experience. That is to say, I won't experience it all. So whatever final moment there is for me where I have my final moment perceiving the passage of time, experiencing it, when that moment ends in a very real way relative to my experience, the entire universe ends literally and figuratively and that fucks me up like that's a weird existential thing to do where i'm just like fuck um because i won't experience any more of that passage of time so so those many billions of years or what yeah the whole thing's just and i get it we want to be alive there's a biological drive to be alive that animals much less intelligent than us have too um but we have brains big enough to think about there's not really animal, other animals that we know of that think of what life will be like after they're gone. They're just gone. 
So yeah, I will say one of the things that that helped with this, apart from from that, and I don't know that I necessarily buy that there's a literal version of the universe ending, but it, it doesn't matter. Is I try to focus on the things that I can do something about. So, for example, when I knew I had heart issues, um, I went in and had triple bypass because I'd like to keep living, and it worked out. Two years ago. Two years ago yesterday, I came home from the hospital um, after having a triple bypass. And I could sit here and worry about the fact that I'm going to die someday, the fact that I'm going to be dead someday, the fact that, I was, you know, there's all these other things. But every second I spend worrying about something that I can't do anything about, every second I spend worrying about what I'm going to miss out on after I'm dead is a second that I'm missing out on something right fucking now. And I don't want to miss out on stuff now because as far as I know, this is the only life I'm going to get. There's not going to be an afterlife. If there is an afterlife and the people uh, who, um, you know, the Christians or whatever, if they're correct, then my afterlife's going to suck. So I should focus on the life that's good right now. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's not so much about stop. You shouldn't stop fearing non-existence or an end to your existence. You should acknowledge that do what you can to avoid it, take care of yourself, uh, you know, et cetera, and make sure that you spend whatever time you have focused on existence. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Dr. Uh, Bob. We went on a long time for $5. Uh, that's, that's such a, a forest move. Yeah, that's why. Uh, $20 from Emory King. Give someone a Jimmy mug with this money. I don't need a mug, but I still want to give money and a vote. Thanks for all you do. I can't wait for all the New Year's plans. Happy New Year to all the hosts on the line. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. You're gay, homie. Uh, I've been giving away a, a, a few mugs for free basically every day, and I will for the remainder of the thing. I will tell you this, Emory. Uh, your $20 becomes $14 by the time the company gets it, by the time the line gets it. And then that is then further, because we profit share to everybody, that's further split between host, production, and then the line gets a cut as well, uh, uh, the, the sort of company cut. So there's, there's three. So th even, even before distributing it, it doesn't actually cover the cost of one mug. And that's the beauty of YouTube and how they think the service of delivering your support money to us warrants a 30% cut on their, on their end. Uh, yeah, it's the best. And yet we'll still give a mug away. Yeah. I, I, there's going to be lots of more mugs given away between now and the end of the month. Yep. Thanks sure. Emery. This one's for you. 499 from Donkey Butt again. How do you not feel like a slave to circumstances if there's no libertarian free will or do you? Um, well, it's another one of those things where I can't do anything to change it. Um, if I don't have free will, then no matter whether I'm uh, acting as if I do or acting as if I don't, I'm right. Um, uh, you're, whether there's free will or not, you are a slave to circumstance, period. Regardless of if there's free will or not, we can predict people's behaviors and demographic things and stuff. And granted, there's always exception in all of those. But um, I, so I, I've co-opted a religious phrase that I, that I say all the time. The phrase is there, but go, for the grace of God, go I. Uh, the phrase I use is there, but for the grace of circumstance, go I. There's so many studies on things like people who are serial killers. For some reason, most of them have this common pathology. People who are like... There's, there's so many things that you can predict about a person based on their circumstances or their likelihood. And when it comes to large masses of groups, you can predict disturbingly well what percentage of, of the people will be of what and, and what else. And, and so you're already a slave of circumstance. And that's actually kind of one of the central to my personal philosophy about forgiveness and giving people a path to redemption and trying to uh, uh, redeem and, and rehabilitate people as opposed to just trying to get revenge because I literally believe that every human being is capable of being Hitler and that circumstance is the main thing that is separates us from being Hitler. Not that we all want to be Hitler, just that everyone could be Hitler um, and that circumstance would 
would be the thing that would change a person to being Hitler. So whether there's free will or not, I think we're all slave to circumstance. Matt's trying to figure out how to, he loves to pick apart the things I say I believe. He's like, how can I shit on this? I'm not trying to shit on I'm it. I'm kidding. thinking about whether or not I agree. I don't think I agree, but I don't think it matters. I mean, I think we're slaves to circumstances. I don't think everybody has the capacity to, to be Hitler, but I don't think it matters. Uh, because since we're slaves to circumstances, the circumstances are going to dictate who is or isn't going to be Hitler. Yeah. It, so it seems to be most of the things that there, there may be a case a person could make for something, but it seems to be that like, so you could say like a person who was born uh, with Down syndrome doesn't have the capacity to be Hitler. Uh, however, you could also argue that circumstance is what gave that person Down syndrome. This is kind of my point. At that point, you're, you're being reductive to the point where it, it, that's why I'm saying it doesn't matter. To whatever extent it's true, it's trivial. Perhaps. Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Uh, Can t do we have more Super Chats? Oh, yeah, yeah. Plenty of them. Sweet. $5 from Dergby. I used to be an atheist, but now I'm convinced that some gods do exist. The football gods. They bless the Cleveland Browns. Hail Flacco. Well. Those were words in a sequence. I can confirm that. I used to be an atheist. I still am. I just lost when when sports came up. Uh, Jamie Slomiuk, as an anti-Zionist, ex-Hasidic atheist Jew, I lost many friends because I'm against the genocide of the Palestinian people. Thanks, Matt, for cheering me up once a week. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Merry Hanukkah, infidels. Well, sounds like someone's an anti-Semite. I'm just kidding. It's fucking crazy. The Hey, we think that civilians shouldn't die. You anti-Semite. It's been a fucking... Beautiful. And then also now just the equivocation now official or, or, or at least the Congress, I don't know if it got signed, but the Congress passing a resolution to say anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism is a ridiculous commentary that the government shouldn't have a say in anyway. Anyway. Yeah, it's weird. Another 499 from donkey Bot. what motivates y'all to learn more, to do better? Um, I have a desire to learn more and to do better. Yeah. I don't understand a lack of that desire, although I know it exists. I'm an obsessive learner. I understand that not everybody is. Um, but why do I want to understand reality and try to help make reality better? Because I benefit from that. I Not only do I benefit from that, but the people that I love and care about benefit from that. So... If I work to make, it, it reminds me of the people when we were talking about climate change and they were like, there was this great meme that people shared, which was, what if we do all this stuff to make the world a better place and it turns out we were wrong? Then you still ended up with a better yeah. world. Oh no. Yeah. It's like, oh gosh, we were wrong about humans causing climate change, but we solved a potential problem, did this. To me, what motivates me to learn more, I, I don't know it's something in my makeup where I'll just, there'll be a subject that captures my interest and I will become absolutely obsessed with it until I get to a point where there's diminishing returns on continued study. I have become, this isn't me bragging. This is, this is probably me talking about what's wrong with me. I have done a number of things at an incredibly high level, trivial things like, origami i've got loads of books down there i've got i've got lang's bible and other stuff i've done incredibly complex models i got to a point where there was really nothing more for me to to learn that was worth my investment once you get through you know circle packing and you can you know come up with an original form and stuff like that now can i still do it well yeah i can still fold paper could i still come up with design no but I've done the same thing with video games. I used to play semi-pro pool. I am, I'm now, we're breeding snakes because we've both found it interesting and we care about the genetics and all that other stuff. Um, I, I don't know why I am the way I am. What I do know is it definitely makes me happy and makes my life better. Yeah. And the one thing that I like the most about it is I've been incredibly fortunate to 
whatever skill I have in explaining complex subjects in a way that anybody can understand it, it's drawn plenty of people to come and listen to me, which means not only do I get to learn stuff, I get to share what I've learned, other people get to benefit from it, and I get to benefit from the fact that other people benefit from it. Every single time I do one of these shows or get to interact with people or have a Q&A session or have a little debate or whatever else, every, every time my life gets better, somebody else's life gets better, and then my life gets better because somebody else's life gets better. It's, it's, it's a, a virtuous cycle that it just makes me happy. Like I, I've said it before, Wednesdays, Wednesdays is about 3.30. I'm like, oh, do I really want to go do a show tonight? Well, you know, I can maybe take the tonight off. And Wednesdays at 930, I've never, ever in the entire history of doing the hangup, I've never been there at 930 going, God, I really wish I wouldn't, wouldn't have done tonight's show. On every single Wednesday, I'm like, wow, that, that sometimes it's not as good as I would have liked it but to be or whatever else. But every single Wednesday, I'm like, I'm glad I did that. And I'm glad you guys are here. So I can't say why. But boy, yeah. it feels good. Yeah. Hitchens would often talk about having some sort of addiction to a captive audience. And I, I share that. There is yeah. something. I don't want to hang out with a group. I don't like doing group activities. I don't like being in crowds unless I'm talking to the crowd. Unless there's that, that level of otherwise I get just sick and anxious. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll command a crowd, but I won't participate in a crowd. Uh, v Vincent King says mods enough said yes we love our mods here thank you so much uh, oh we've got TARDIS chick hasn't been here in a while my goodness yes I haven't seen you in ages I love you I hope you're okay yeah it's good to see you $10 from spineless moderate Matt what's the species of snake you would most like to own and breed Jimmy what's the species of tree you would most like to work with and craft into something oh okay um <laughs> So we currently have eight species of snakes. There's a species that I don't know if I'm even legally allowed to have, but I have to list it as my most desirable species to actually own and breed. And that is Xenodon hystricus, which is also known as Jan's hognose snake. It is a neotropical tricolor hognose snake from Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, Brazil, in that vicinity. I don't know what the export laws are. I've been talking to people who live in that area to see if it's even possible. Does anybody keep them? Does anybody breed them? They are just... I, I'm going to pull up a picture and put it in, in my background here in a second while Jimmy's answering. Yeah, every time I work with Gaboon Ebony or Black and White Ebony uh, wood, I'm always like, this is the coolest fucking wood. It's so dense that it, um, that even when you like, when you put it in a, 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 what's the fucking thing I use? It's the one I use the most. It spins the goddamn wood. I, I'm not kidding. I had the flu last week and I'm so surprised it wasn't COVID because I've had so much brain fog. Flog, brain fog, a lathe. When I put it in my lathe, a lot of wood you get shavings off of. Whereas this stuff is so dense that one, you have to go at a high speed and, and have fresh blades. And it more comes off as a powder than it does because it doesn't, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't fully understand the physics of why it would be less ribbony than more ribbony. But anyway, it's super dense. It, it makes such satisfying. You can almost... You could almost only use really sharp cutting tools and always get like a very smooth finish. You almost don't need to sand it. Um, obviously, I still sand, but you almost don't need to. So I really like just really it. Uh, there's a lot of African woods that I like, but they're very, very expensive. Like I looked up a table recently, just like a round side table, not like a coffee table, like a little round table you would put next to your... Uh, uh, couch and it's like fifteen thousand dollars. That is Xenodon hystricus, and one of the prettiest examples I've seen. But it is a tricolor hognose snake from South America. That from the second I saw it, I was like, I want to breed these, and I don't know if I'll ever get to. I don't know if I'll ever get to see one or hold one. Even if I were to go to the area where they naturally are, 
I might not get the chance to do that, but good, yeah. fun question. Thanks. Too many good questions tonight. Jared Jerbear Fuller says the wine glass is interesting. When Jimmy wants more wine, Matt says, no, 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 you're done. Cheers to a happy and healthy 2024. Uh, if anything, Matt and I have a friendship that is built on feeling safe whining to each other. I, yeah, we're really good at whining to each other. I embrace that. I like whining. I think everyone likes whining, frankly. Uh, yep. but we pretend everyone doesn't. $20 from John Kennel. Matt, if you were just a little less principled, think of the crimes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, also from MD, what if I buy 14 mugs? Do I get double the refund? Yeah. If, I mean, you've only got three minutes left to do it. Nobody else has taken me up on it. But yeah, if you got 14 and it was seven of each, so two or rather two of each, all seven people, uh, I would, let me actually see, maybe somebody did do it by now. Uh, but yes, I would, uh, uh, I would, I would reward that sale with the same 33, 33 twice. Sure. Oh, we did do, we did do, uh, have two people do that. I'll, I'll handle that when we're reading the, uh, the comments, refunding the 33, 33 from the people. Um, let's see. Let's see. This one's you. $5 from monkey a typewriter merch pitch, a mug for the hang up that says, no, 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 you're done on the bottom of the inside. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, that might be possible. It would mean that we have had strong merch sales generally, because that would mean that we have enough money in our account with our merch provider to do special runs of things where we have to. Uh, so there are some things where if it's so specific and custom like that, we would have to buy a minimum order of say 500 in advance. Like, but we would have to give them the money for the cost of 500. Uh, to produce, but that's, that is a really funny idea. That's probably my favorite user submitted idea, actually, period. Uh, y'all, some of y'all have sent some stupid ideas. He's uh, talking to me at that point as well. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, I have had some really dumb ideas. Not about merch. Eh, a little bit. I don't remember what your merch ideas were. So maybe you're right. I don't know. <laughs> $10 from bread box of doom. I already bought an Arden mug, best mug. I might even buy another one. Hashtag team Arden. Well, you're going to have a hard time getting me to be opposed to hashtag team Arden. Uh, since we're still live and we've hit that hour, uh, I will continue until we end the show. So if the show is still live, any that come in with a purchase of all seven, one of each, not seven total, one of each mug from each person. I, I will continue refunding two mugs uh, for the remainder of the live show. Uh, I'm trying to get Arden's attention so that she can actually bring our newest hog nose over oh, to yeah. see me. Spineless Modder says, Jimmy, I have a MetaQuest 2. Is the MetaQuest 3 really that much better? Also, have you ever played Blade and Sorcery? I absolutely love that game. Yes, it is. Especially if you are... So, are there people who... If you are a once a month VR person or less than that, probably not. It's probably not going to add so much value to your life. But if you are like me, a twice a day VR person or something like that, I use VR every day for real. Um, uh, it's not even a close question. In fact, that's why I also sometimes invest in more advanced headsets that are that that cost even more than that. But uh, the difference in the Quest Two and the Quest Three, it's like the difference between 480p and 1080p we're not up to 4k yet though actually this is maybe up to like feeling more like 1440p than 1080 uh it is it is a, a significant difference generally now there are specific games that haven't enhanced it yet uh where you'll still notice things like a lack of a screen door effect that's the big thing text is so easy to read the pass through isn't the path through is not perfect, but it's so much better. You will use it a lot and not be bothered that you're using it. Whereas the pass through on the quest two was garbage and you've lamented ever having to use it. This is our newest Western hog nose. It's a different species. It's not a tricolor. It's not from South America. We named him Earl of lemongrass 
His eyes are huge. A lemon, or a lemon grab. Sorry. I was thinking of food because I'm hungry. Um, but he is grass? an albino anaconda male, full grown adult. I mean, he'll get bigger because everything keeps growing, but he's look at him. Just look at that face. How you not want to boop that snoot? That's a, that's a boopable snoopable. Snootable. So boot- I wasn't boot- even boot- sure you boot- saw that because it, it didn't get marked red. So I was like, oh, I'm trying to get Arden to bring me a snake. And I heard you. Ah, thank you. Eddie Alive. Five says, hours from Eddie Alive. Oh, go on. is it me? I don't know. Watching you guys tonight made me a harder atheist. <laughs> well, that's you don't have to get that personal. It's, it's Jimmy is always go fuck yourself. And Matt, Matt, you are old, ugly, and often wrong. Happy New Year, gents. What the fuck? Well done. <laughs> $5 from Monkey at a typewriter. Also, the transporters are all murder booths by definition. Making a copy at the same time you destroyed the original isn't transportation. You're gay, yep. homie, and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I, I like the fact that I'm, I'm old and awful, but still made him hard. Hell yeah. $10 from Emery King. Here, this is to cover the extra. Sorry, I didn't know. I don't know how money works. <laughs> Uh, I just want Jimmy to get the vote because he's right that objectively his will be funniest on a shirt. Fair point. I agree with that. I, that was the point I tried to make the other night. As you all are remembering what the stakes are, whichever mug sells the most, we're putting that on a shirt and requiring all the hosts to wear it for at least one show in February. And I jimmied myself on Christmas is the funniest thing to have everybody in a shirt with a shirt on, I think. I feel. I don't even have dimples. And I definitely have bad days, so I don't want to wear that fucking bullshit for a shirt. And I'm old, ugly, and often wrong, so why would you want my cup? Now, I feel like you want an alternate mug design now. Make us all wear I that do. shirt. That's, that's my next mug. <laughs> yeah. Old, ugly, and often wrong, and yet still, people are tuning in to hear me and not you. $10 from Regato. I am an atheist and I love the Christmas season, but I also like opera and Star Trek. So Merry Heaven Christmas and prosperous Klingon Day of Honor. Hell well yeah. done. You like opera like the Dario Argento film? Because you 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 capitalized that. So I didn't know if it was like opera in general or Donkey Butt, another twenty dollars says, because I asked a lot of big open-ended questions, one for five dollars and now I feel bad for it. So here we go. Appreciate y'all helping me clarifying my thinking and make my life better. Jimmy, go fuck yourself, Matt. You're gay, homie. Well, we appreciate that. Thanks, Donkey Butt. Uh five dollars from SJL. Hmm. Matt, if you could somehow get a Titanobo, would you? <laughs> no. Uh where where would you put that? I, I don't need any snake that's anywhere near that big. As a matter of fact, I'm not keeping big snakes. <laughs> we will probably have a, a Burmese, which is really big, but is, is still manageable. And I would love to get some dwarf reticulated pythons. Um, but really, I think carpet pythons are about as big as I'd normally get. There's a couple berms I want to get just to have you know, a breeding group and a group for shows at schools because people expect you, if you're going to do a, a school show with snakes, to have one snake that's like, you know, big and thick and 10, 10 12, 15 foot long. Um, Jimmy, you should make Matt something out of snake wood. I, uh, I love Matt, but I don't, I don't love Matt um, $200 a foot much. Yeah. Which is what I think it is that for like a, for like a two by two block, which that's if I'm on the lathe, if I'm wanting boards, oh my God. Yeah. $200 a it's board. It's really foot. pretty stuff though. Oh yeah. It's yeah. really pretty. Some of the best. I wonder if anybody has like, somebody has got to be so ridiculously rich that they have hardwood snake wood floors in their house. Anyway. Man, that'd be insane. Yeah. $5 from them. Stephanie Helms. Well, let's go hashtag Team Arden. Definitely. It's funny because tomorrow you're going to be against hashtag Team Arden when it's hashtag Team Stephanie versus hashtag Team Arden. Uh, five pounds from Jamie Bullion. Team Forests, scientifically the best. Oh. All right, let's do mug stuff and then let's call it a fucking night. I'll uh, hit these refunds while we're doing it. I, I just think. checked the prices on Snakewood. Is it 200 a board foot? 
So there's half logs ungraded for $28 a pound, but a 6.75 inch by 5.5 inch by four foot length is $2,205.28. Yeah, that untreated wood will have a very wow. small core that is even usable. Uh, and once you trim it down and dry it and everything, like it's going to be, you wouldn't be able to use it for five years. You you might be able to make a, a few like good magic wands out of that $2,200 four foot board. Yeah. And no, I, I don't know that anyone would understand the value because honestly, I don't know that I would understand because I make good wands. I make cool wands. If anybody's ever seen the godless engineer penis wand, that's a Jimmy Snow original, by the way. Uh, and uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know that the difference in how good they come out is worth that dollar amount personally. But anyway, uh, thank you to Melissa who said, wishing all the members and viewers of the line a happy and safe new year. Robert says, thank you for what you do. Dave says, be good to each other, except Andrew Tate. Never be good to Andrew Tate. Oh, and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I've, I've, I've never have and never will be good to Andrew Tate. Uh, Dimitri, who bought one of my mugs, thank you so much, uh, says, contributing to Forrest's freedom one day. Uh, referring to one of the outros on our clips. Ryan bought... Oh, I was going to say a Jimmy and a map, but it's the Jimmy and a forest. Subscribe to all the wonderful channels these amazing people have made and buy a damn mug. I'll get the Jimmy out of here. Buy a mug. That's sweet. Alexis says, found $40 in the wash. Turns out I can afford the others. And it was the better school in the area, LOL. Love y'all. Jimmy, go Jimmy yourself. That was the person I said. It sounds like your public school sucked. Uh, Thomas, thank you. Joris says, I guess I'll have to drink tea now. I wish you all the best of luck in 2024. I don't drink hot stuff almost ever. Uh, when you see me drinking out of a mug, it's almost always just water. I just, but I like, I like a mug. I love a mug. Do you drink uh, out of mugs? What do you mostly drink? Hot stuff or cold stuff? If I'm, well, I, I do like hot chocolate, but I can't have it very often. Mm. Um, so that's probably my my number one. Yeah. Uh, Arden was telling me how many mugs y'all already have when I was talking about getting mugs. And that, and so as far as it's woodworking hot. gifts, maybe I'll have to make you a snake wood mug tree. It's not going to happen. <laughs> that's so expensive. But I'll, maybe I'll make you an ebony one. Uh, Steve, thank you very much. Miko, thank you. Randy said, oh, did I miss the message on the last one? Sorry. Uh, Miko says, I'm buying this mug for my significant other since she likes Jimmy. What's wrong with her and can she be fixed? Yeah. If, yeah. All Miko, uh, Miko, all your significant other has to do to stop liking me is meet me. <laughs> and then it's all downhill. Uh, Randy <laughs> says, miss the Christmas show. Glad I got the goods. Thank you, Randy. Christopher says, Christ on a cracker. How was I supposed to choose? Love to you all. Cheers. Sarah, thank you, says, I wish I could buy all the mugs, but Arn and his mug capture my apostate angst the best, I think. Maybe next time be emo-er. Nice. Justin says, buy my mug. It's so much better than Jimmy's. Um, and bought Arn and Venuses, so I don't know which mug Justin is saying is, is Justin's mug. Virga says, thank you for all you do. Thank you so much. And Mar says, keep up the good work. Religion should be demolished from the face of the earth. I wish Hitch was here. You know, with certain things in recent years, I've been a little bit glad he's not because I can preserve mostly admiring the man. Uh, but I don't, I worry about what his takes would have been on certain issues. Though he wouldn't have been, uh, he wouldn't have been, Pro, he was definitely not a Zionist, but I worry he would have gone the same way as many of his friends on issues that matter a lot to me. Uh, I, a part of me thinks that, and part of me thinks that maybe 
he would have helped counter some of the intellectual dark web stuff by being a contrarian and a check valve for some of them. That would have but, been amazing too. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to, hard to tell which, uh, thank you very much, Alexander. And I just refunded 3333 because you bought one of each. You got the whole set. Thank you so much. And Bradley, who it looks like, yep, did the exact same thing. So I will do yours now as well. Uh, and you left the message, go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Mm. It's funny because uh, they can add extra money to their order. And I'm refunding uh, 4840 because they got the bigger mugs to somebody nice. who also left a $20 donation. So it's like... Why not just leave no donation and, and say only refund? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, you got the whole set and you got that, uh, that sweet, sweet 4840 refunded back. Let me see if anybody has messaged anything or left anything since Bradley. Yep, we've got one from Rain who bought a map mug. Says, love you guys. I'm gay, homie. Hail Satan. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Let's see if um, I'm waiting for, for the day when we do a show where the, the show starts and then it's just 37 minutes of every little catch phrase. So Fergal, burgle, Minerga, burgle, you're gay, homie, go fuck yourself. Jimmy, Bob, you know, just boo, 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 boo. Yeah. And it takes like 10 minutes to get through the whole thing. Uh, people had mentioned in the comments, uh, schmoobly dong is not mine. Uh, I realized after I said it on sudden day, Schmoobly Dong is a reference to an American Dad episode. It was spoken by Roger when trying to explain what it feels like to eat Ortolan. And he goes, something different, transcendent. Schmoobly Dong? Not that, but that's close. Uh, so that that's not my official catchphrase before anybody's looking for that on a shirt. $5 from Rich is Arrogant. Matt, can you say... Can you name any animals of the forecastle? That's forecastle. That's how you pronounce that? Yeah, forecastle. Wow. Uh, it was my home. Uh, I was on CVN 71 USS Theodore Roosevelt for a number of years, and I used to run the forecastle. I was co-LPO of First Division. Um, can I name any animals of the forecastle? Um so I haven't, it's been since 1995 or so. Uh, and actually it's probably 1993. It was the last time I was on a forecastle. I was a um, toddler. So I'm not going to get very many, but bullnose, monkey's fist, rat guard, pelican hook. Uh, oh, what wildcat. That, that's a few. It's a little, it's, it's kind of like an inside joke thing where we have names for things and some of them are named after animals. And, and so it's like, oh, what are all the animals on the forecastle? And people be like, there's no animals on the forecastle. Meanwhile, you run down and get me, you know, 20 yards of water line and some relative bearing grease. Um, but yeah, Stephanie's got it. Forecastle's got two apostrophes in it. Hell yeah. Thanks, Rich. That's rich. I just wanted to say that. Um, I think that's it. Are we good on mug orders also? Bada bing, bada boom. Yep, we're good. The show's over. Goodbye. <laughs> that's the way Jimmy wraps up shows, but that's not the way I wrap up shows. Look at all those patron producers and everything else is going on. Don't forget to go to callthelinecom Patreon.com slash call the line, QA line.com, line merch, and all those other things so that you guys can help support us in a number of different ways. But thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Don't forget about all the other shows here on the line network. I'll see you again next Wednesday for more therapy for me and wonderful, loving thoughts directed at all of you. Thanks, Jimmy. See you later.